gonna do the introduction. I'll, like, yeah, let me do it. I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> let me adjust my mic. So, what's up, guys? We're back again. Let's play, boys. Up. It was uh, about my, uh, <laughs> it's woman on fire, it's, it's about my divorce and what I went through and so okay, forth, so okay. it wasn't the, oh, well, let me hook, let me let me read a few pages and not, mm -mm. it was just like, he heard my dream, and, okay. you know, and by him being an entrepreneur too, it was like, it okay, sense. okay, that's yeah, like, uh, I see. whereas, like I said, the other guys, they were like, oh, well, okay, well, you could continue to be a teacher, you know, okay. that type of deal, so... It was a support and just the the fact that um and you didn't get that like because my first husband was jealous of my oh, career, you know my entrepreneur journey and so forth. Damn. Yeah. Damn. That's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's 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 really tough. Yeah. Oh, that man. was. I do like do, jealousy is real like in men. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, women. I mean, like we. I think we all have like a sense of jealousy and everything. Like me personally. Yeah. yeah. If I like if like. If my woman, like, if she cooks, mm -hmm. even if it's a father, if she mm -hmm. gives the first place to a father, oh, I'm, oh, hell, everybody got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> everybody got to go. I, I, that was my first time experiencing jealousy from a guy, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I was shocked. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, I'm like, wait a minute, you know? Because I'm, in my mind, I'm like, if I, if I grow, mm -hmm. then you grow. You know what I'm saying? Facts, like, it's facts, that whole team thing. Facts. And so the jealousy was real. And I was like, that's oh like a That's like a thing, too. Like, yeah. Especially, there's a lot of dudes out here, like, when they see, like, they, the girl has, like, a their woman has, like, a certain light. Yeah. They going to try to kill it as fast as they can yeah. see it. As fast as they see it. Because, like, they want them to be, you know, tamed or something yeah, like that. They want yeah. to be like, oh, nah, like, no, I'm I, the one that running the show. You going yeah. to be right here, like. And I, don't, I think that's like, it's like for what? Yeah. Like I, honestly, like for what? For what? Yeah, because my, my thing for is what? if I make it, you're going to make it. You know, like mm, I tell yeah, the chef, yeah. I'm like, if when I make it, you're going to make it because yeah. it's a, you know, team effort. So Thanks. whatever I do, it has to spill over into our household. So it has to affect him as well, you know? Sucks, sucks, sucks. So, but yeah. Nah, people don't have that mindset. Yeah. You know yeah. What you're about to say? No, I'm just saying like, because I mean, because I've seen it just growing up amongst like, you know, like. I ain't gonna say nobody names or nothing like that, yeah. but like this family, like I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Whereas like this woman, what she's working on something, and he's like, nah, 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 I got it. I'm doing this. Like, yeah. you support me what I'm doing, but put, it's like. Put, put some name on it. Huh? Nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> you trying to get folks nah, in trouble. I'm gonna be running phase after this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, um, because I mean, in, when I got out here to start dating, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm dealing with, because I started dating, like, young, like, 13. Oh, wow. Stuff like that, really, like. But then, like, anybody that had, like, a dream or something, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's play. Oh, yeah, for sure. What I need yeah. to help you with? What I need to help you with? Yeah. That's, that's, that's my type of thing, because yeah. it's just, like, a help and hand thing. It's right. not even about what I can get out of it. It's, like, we all human beings. That's right. how I look at it. Like, you need help. Sure. Exactly. Let's it's just help each other out. Yeah. It's just that mm. simple, like. Yeah. I'm yeah. um, like most people don't see it that way. No, like people people want to get over you more than you yeah. like, trying to build together. Yeah, because I even had like experience there where I was like, hey yo, you have a mindset of a business, right? Mm -hmm. I said, like, why don't you just like build that business together? Right, because our mindset yeah. is for the future. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I was like, let's build it together, and she's like, nah, just give me the the fun, I build mm. it, and then I give you back the fun. And I was like. I don't think you're the woman for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, there you. Yeah, so yeah, damn, yeah. Go. You don't see the bigger picture. Yeah, and, yeah. And then like, and to me, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I, I think I let like my feeling take the better part of me instead of being logical about that and be like, yo, you're not the, you're not the woman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a cold feeling though when you realize like, nah, this ain't gonna work out. Yeah, I know, but like, kind of hurt. Like, yeah, like, it, 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 wait, it wait, 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 so wait, like, wait, oh yo. Yeah. Okay, man. okay, like, introduce yourself because I got a question <laughs> or whatever. Wait, well, yeah, um, I guess I'll run the intro, I yeah, guess. Yeah, facts. Um, what's going on, you guys? Paper Play Boys is episode. Don't say I don't, episode, even, I don't man. even know. Just... It's episode something. <laughs> it's it was so episode awesome. something. It's episode something. <laughs> yeah. And, man, I'm Malcolm. You guys seen me before, you know what I'm saying? I'm wearing my glasses because I got just got my eyes checked again. So I'm wearing glasses I mean, here on blind. that. blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they said my lip. Yeah. That's uh, a whole other story, bro. I, um, introduce yourself, bro. I'm Eric. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I have to keep saying this. I don't like you people, but let's just be honest. <laughs> like, I just came, you know, I just came from work from a long flight, so this is gonna be very interesting. Like, mm -hmm. so uh, we have a special guest here. 
And we also have, she has her perfect husband over there. Uh, don't <laughs> mind me if I say anything crazy. <laughs> I'm tired. We're going to call him boss man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, please introduce yourself, man. You don't know what you do. I you know? am. Well, thank you so much for having me. I am Coach Tashawn, um, relationship coach, specialized in bridging the communication gap in marriages seven years plus. Ooh. So I'm a former educator of 28 years. I took early retirement two years ago to pursue this full time. So. I'm here, so thank y'all so much for having me. Thank you, thank you for sure, coming. Like sure. you said, communication, communication bridge. Yes, bridging and, that communication yeah, yeah, I gap. I think like now, just like when it comes to everything, there's like a very big lack of communication. I wonder, like, yeah, what happened? It's communication and comprehension. Yeah. That's what we forget about. So we're so focused on communicate, communicate. We got to communicate, but what we're not understanding, what is that person hearing? and understanding, you okay. know. Um, and that's something I've had to learn over time as a, a former teacher with my students. You know, you can, you, you can stand up at the board for an, an exact 30, 45 minutes and give all of the instructions on mm -hmm. what to do, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have at least four or five, what you say? <laughs> you oh, know, yeah, sure. after you uh -huh. finish, uh -huh. yeah. and you're like, I just explained it, explained it. So what happened in my career over time, I started understanding. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They're not understanding what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. let me break it, down, break it down, you know, right. and it's okay. Like I, I was that teacher who did not mind for my students to ask questions. I'd okay, rather okay. for you to ask questions. I want you to, you know, I want you to master whatever it is. I'm not, you understand? No, because people do understand at different levels. Mm -hmm. And so it spills over in our adulthood as well. But okay. we just forget about us being adulthood, adults because we just figure we all understand and comprehend the same way, right. which is not true. Mm -hmm. We all grew up in different households. So you don't know what the comprehension was like. You don't know what the conversations would be like when you get with somebody. Mm -hmm. So it's the communication and comprehension. So yeah, like, that's so, the breakdown. So basically, do not believe that dumb thing will maybe be like, you should read my mind. No, but, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, no, like, uh, I, I was even, uh, was, I, was I think I was debating with a lady about um, uh, the, like, this, the judge and this, you know, the uh, politics. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, look, I don't really understand politics, so you got to slow down. Yeah. So she kept going and going and going. And I was like, whoa, hold on. Yeah. You lost me. But she kept going. She was like... Oh, you're trying to cut me off. And I was like, first of all, you're trying to teach me something yeah. that I have no knowledge about. Right. So I will need your ass to slow the fuck yeah. down. <laughs> or we can just end this conversation right now because all this back and forth, you getting pissed, getting frustrated. Yeah. I don't have time for that. And she was like, why you guys talk to me like that? I was like, because I'm trying to learn from you. Yeah. If I said slow down, slow down. I'm trying to figure out where I'm at with you. Yeah. Don't just run on like I'm the top dog about politics. But if you can't do that, I will bid you a good day. Yeah. I'll hang up on your ass right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a real though, because like, man, like <laughs> when someone doesn't like, because you when you when you dating, you guys are coming from maybe not the same world. So it's like mm -hmm. you guys have to you guys have to fix a, fix around like mm -hmm. the your wording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so you yeah. can understand because like 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 for instance, like a girl I'm lady I'm dealing with, like she is in the medicine world and okay. the, the physical therapy world. Yeah. You didn't say who I wasted the woman. Yeah, the woman are you dating with. or are you dealing no, with no, her? No, 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 I'm dating her, I'm dating her. But yeah, like, that, 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 that's just my lingo, that's my lingo though. That's how I'm talking. She, she knows what I mean, she know what I mean. Well, that's comprehension because yeah. okay. if you're saying Dylan, what does Dylan mean? If you say dating, <laughs> like Dylan mean I'm just, is she a booty call? That's my girl, that's my girl, Okay, that's your girl. That's my lingo though, that's my item, yeah. But you see how your lingo can be confused confusing yeah. to but I mean as long as you two understand it mm -hmm. but on the average if you was to say that and you were actually dating a person a, a, another girl just dating mm -hmm. and she and you said that in front of her like oh I'm just dealing with her or whatnot she gonna she gonna take that like oh what, oh you dealing oh, with me oh, now yeah you know what I'm saying like so it's that comprehension mm -hmm. and that's that's that breakdown between men and women because that's your lingo Mm -hmm. Which is cool yeah, yeah. because you know what you're saying, yeah, right? Um, but but yeah. when you're dating a woman, she don't understand because all she heard now was, "Oh, you dealing with me now?" So, Ooh. oh, it's like that, Ooh. you know. Versus saying, 
That's my woman right there. I, I have a kind right. of question. We might mm-hmm. get canceled for it. Because these women be crazy. All right. So, like, okay. I, I've dealt with a woman where, where I said, hey, I'm about to go to the store. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And she going to hear, I'm about to go see a woman. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I, I would never be like, wait, what part did you hear me say anything about a woman? <laughs> Like and she was like, oh, no, no. I was like, yo, just get your ass in the car so we can get to the store. Yeah, let's go together. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and, cause you said like, you know, women are, are different, but like to me, mm-hmm. it's like, where does that come from? Because, like, I experienced uh, having conversation with a lot of women, and I would say like something as simple mm-hmm. as like I said, going to the store, mm-hmm. and she will hear totally something different. Yeah, comes from the past traumas, that uh, unhealed past traumas, because she's been been cheated on one or that guy may have gone to the store Mm -hmm. to meet up with oh girl another girl you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so this is still in the back of her mind like Mm -hmm. okay here he is he's a good guy but he said he's going to the store so it's a trigger for her and so what happens is a lot of times we get into relationships and this is why i always advocate do not date until you are healed and what does that healing look like it depends on you because Everything can be a trigger. You know what I'm saying? Like anything can be a trigger. Mm -hmm. However, when you are healed, those triggers don't matter. So that was an insecurity and a trigger for her if you were going to the store because somewhere somebody hurt her that went to the store. You see what I'm saying? And she found out something all related to you going to the store. Okay. So that's what happens when you see, and and that's what happens with most of the, the women now you do have some of those women that just that's just gonna act out just regardless because oh, yeah, they sure. yeah they just mm-hmm. want to show out you know I I will admit those are those <laughs> yeah you be like listen it ain't that serious you know you do yeah, you know yeah. when you look back you're like come on really he going to the store and so, so though that's that's another type of woman but the average woman who's who's triggered by this because she's unhealed mm-hmm. and it was something that happened. Yeah. So I wanted to ask a question too, because I remember you, you just said healed. Like, mm-hmm. like it's kind of like two questions. So like what does healed actually mean by like your definition of being a coach? Mm-hmm. And are we like ever fully healed though? That's mm. a good question. We're good I don't question. feel like that we're forever healed. What it uh, what happens is there's a process. Um and as long as you're working on yourself and you're um you're growing. It's mm-hmm. all about that growth because right. something is always going to happen in your life. There's mm-hmm. always going to be a traumatic experience. That's part of life. You know how mm-hmm. they say life be life and yeah, uh-huh. it's part of life, you know. Um prime example when I I went through my divorce, I took 8 to 10 years to heal by mm-hmm. myself, right? I'm yeah. good. I'm now I'm able to walk out there with confidence and I'm ready to date. Um the triggers are gone. I've healed from the triggers because I you know, dealt with, uh, I mean, uh, went to therapy, you know, all of this stuff. So I have actions in place. Okay. Then boom, years later, parent dies. So now I'm experiencing more trauma yeah. that happens. And then boom, COVID hits. Then I'm experiencing more trauma. Oh, so dang. we're always going to yeah. have some trauma, right? Yeah. And so your healing just looks like, what is it that you want differently from before? Do you want to... because your triggers can uh, unheal people. Of course, that's where you experience your depression and, you know, um, all of the, the stuff that comes with it. But what is it that, that you want out of it? And so a he- healing for each person looks totally different, you know. Um, for me, my healing journey was um, I wanted to get rid of all the past traumas from my dating life. Gotcha. You know, I'm 52, so I didn't, I didn't experience a lot. So okay. I wanted to get rid of all of the trauma, and that's what I did. You okay. see what I'm saying? So that was a healing journey. Some people are like, oh, I'm good. I just want to be healed over. Forget about Rashawn now, you know, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, and move on to the next guy. So it just depends on that person. But I do encourage people to really take a look into their life and what is it that they really want. Mm. Because you can't jump into a new relationship and you still got Rashawn on your mind. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. That's what happens. Okay. We're still having, especially women, we don't, we don't heal it, you know? Because when you get into a new relationship, you ain't supposed to compare your old with your new. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and we yeah. do it all the time. Yeah, I, we do it all I, the time. Because like, like uh, ex was like, oh, 
He's like, you used to do this for me, you used to do that. I said, then you need to pack your shit and go to him then. Oh, you did not tell. Yeah, I did. Did you tell? No, yeah, he said it for sure. <laughs> 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 no, he said it for sure. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, to me, it's like, yo, I, I've, like, that was your past. Yeah. Like, if it's still, like, if you still have a lingering about your past, mm-hmm. then let me know. Yeah. It's something we can talk about, communicate, and then move forward from that. Yeah. But if you're trying to come and compare me to something that you had before, mm-hmm. I'm not that person that you had before. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want that, gladly leave and go yeah. find what you had before. Yeah. So do not come and try and like disturb my peace. Yeah. Do not come and give me a headache. Mm-hmm. Tell me, oh, you used to this, do that. Okay, cool. What was her response when you told her to get up and go? She got quiet and she was like, you a dick. And I was like, <laughs> hey, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so like based off because I, I kind of want to follow the way he said as far as like I know we don't have we don't know the stats yeah you know but I would like a rough estimate right mm-hmm. so what would you say as far as on the male side and the woman's side right mm-hmm. as a percentage what percentage do you think people are stuck on their past relationships when they enter a new one? Oh, 99.9% uh, of the time <laughs> I thought you were going to say like 70 at least <laughs> No, yeah. because what 9. happens... 9.9%? No. Healing takes means that I have to take accountability. Ooh. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh. women, one reason I, I stopped coaching women, just women. I oh. love us. I'm women, woman empowerment or whatever. You stop? I stopped coaching women because for the self, I used to do self-love journey. Yeah. And, you know, wrote a book, a journal and all of that. Like that's because I know what it takes, you know, that's what I did. So I'm like, boom. But what I was running into, the women like, oh, I want, I want to, you know, want your services. I want you to coach me. But as soon as I tell them what they need to do, all they heard was going back to that comprehension was, oh, this is my fault. I'm like, no, sis, it's not your fault, but we got to take accountability for Things that I can't tell you how to get a man, mm. but I can tell you that you need to work on X, Y, and Z. A man doesn't want a nagging woman, so you're gonna have to work on a nag, right? Oh, so you're telling me it's my fault, da 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 da. So we don't want to hear. We don't. When we hear that you have to work on yourself, we hear, oh, this is my fault. We hear blame versus mm. accountability. Mm. So the accountability piece is what it what causes us not to heal properly. Mm-hmm. So we keep the cycle going. We keep the trauma going. If you notice now, people don't want resolutions. They want to keep talking and talking. One reason I, you know, I love podcasts. I love everybody. Everybody has a niche. I, I get that. But what's happening, everybody wants to give, want to keep trauma going, mm-hmm. right, on yeah. the podcast. They want to keep trauma going. Nobody wants to come with solutions. So yeah. that's why now you're, people are attracted to trauma, so as soon as you say anything about healing, accountability, what we're going to do next, it's like, whoa, okay, well, um, I'm just, they don't want to do it. They don't yeah. want to do the work to get to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's some work. It's some work, too, because you got to look in that mirror, and it, 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 it can get hard, because yeah. I, I had time looking in the mirror, I'm like, yeah. One of I my, effed up, man. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. But my thing is like, okay, like, you wrong, but like, what's wrong with being wrong? Right, because it just it's gonna happen. You're gonna yeah. you're not gonna be right every time. Right, like, you you gonna miss you gonna miss some steps along the way. Yeah. Like yeah. so, it's like I, even with just dating and women not want to take accountability. Men too, though. Like yeah, not just you know. But it's like it's cool being wrong though. But, right, but to just change that little yeah. mess up you just did by just mm-hmm. acting different. You know, exactly. Going just making like, those simple changes. It's uh-huh. you know, um, I talked about in my first book um, about you know I know what my ex husband did. He did what he did. But also, once I finished blaming him and, you know, getting that out of my system, I also had to step back and say, well, Trinette, what is it that you didn't do as a wife at that time? What are some things that you could have done differently? And that was the hardest part of my journey, believe it or not. Like, it was the excruciating, painful, because here I am, I'm thinking I'm a perfect wife. You know, I'm doing everything I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But it was also some things hidden. I was like, oh. So once I started with my therapy and once I started really de- digging, and, and it was not an overnight process. This was like years into mm-hmm. it. And once I had, and I, I wrote about that, I, actually one of my exercises in the journal is getting in that mirror, but getting that mirror like naked, physically, spiritually, mentally naked. 
And that was the hardest part of my journey. It's like literally putting myself fresh out the shower. I don't want to be graphic or whatnot, but literally standing in front of my full length mirror and just going, just t- analyzing myself and saying, what is wrong? Mm. What's going on? You know? So, and that's what I had to do. And so that's the part where people don't want to do. Okay. They don't want to take a look at themselves. So like if you, if you meet someone, they don't know how to, you know, they don't want to take accountability. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you approach them so that they can see, like, hey, look, I'm not saying what you did is wrong. Mm-hmm. Or right, that's your own belief. But I want to tell you, like, doing that to me is <laughs> not okay. So yeah. how do you, like, talk to someone and be like, yo, take accountability for what you did. Yeah. You know, we're not blaming you. We're not saying you're the worst person in the world. But, like, say, hey, I did it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Like, how do you get to that process with someone? You know, that's, um, it's a process because when you approach someone with that, again, that person only hears you're blaming me, you know? So sometimes, um, you're not the person to, you just can show them versus just telling them, you know, say, Hey, I did some things that were wrong too, you know? And these were some steps that I did to make, like you say, make right with myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you go to somebody and say, you did this and you did that and da, 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 da that person going to shut down. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to be like, okay, well, psh, you ain't perfect either. Da, da, da. So it's going to continue it's going to that. Flake, yeah, yeah you know, it's going to continue that cycle of blaming each other. So I would just really suggest that, you know, you can bring it to their attention and say, hey, you know what? You're a good person. You're a cool person. I, you know, I can walk, walk this journey with you, but it's going to take work. You know, mm-hmm. we, it, especially if you don't like, um, it's gonna take. It's gonna take work. So you got something to say? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hello. We can, but it's not. Again, it goes. Oh, okay. You go ahead. That's perfect. Nah, you I'll, 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 okay. I'll say it because I don't know if he's gonna pick up. So, so Boston basically just asks, can. <laughs> <laughs> Her husband can can women take constructive criti- constructive constructive criticism? Hell no. <laughs> you say no. It goes back to the accountability it's a small piece. Small minority. Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to the accountability piece. And and again, because we're in a society where a woman is always looked upon as she has to be perfect in every sense, in her physical, her mental. She's looked at, especially a black woman, she has to be strong in every area, right? So what happens is, as a woman, and I'm guilty of this, I want to make sure that whoever sees me, they're going to see perfection. They're going to mm. see that I'm not going to mess up. So if you come to me and you say, you didn't do this right, guess mm. what's happening in the back of my mind? I'm fli- flipping out, right? Because right, right. now I'm like, all I heard him say was something wrong. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, wait a minute, but I've been trying to do this, this, that, another. I, d- wait, wait, wait. And so this is where you come in, the women come into, especially black women, with the whole mental breakdown. Because we're like, wait a minute, I've been doing all this stuff perfectly. How could you see something wrong? Mm-hmm. And again, going back to that accountability. So we don't see. So for me, it's all about the how you say it. Um, I, I've always been that person where... Let's let's have a conversation. I don't have to belittle you. I don't have to make you feel bad about anything. Let's talk. Mm. You know, because your words can your words can tear a person down. You know what I'm saying? It's it's that that power of the tongue is so real. Gotcha. So you can come to a person and say, Hey, you know what? I really didn't like the way you did this to me, or it made me feel like really we gotta get back to that authentic conversation. And mm. we've left that. You know, instead we want to get on social media, we want to block each other, we want to put up subliminal messages, mm. we want to do all of this other <laughs> stuff versus... Yeah, they want to ghost you. Yeah, ghost you, you know, yeah. right. Oh, yeah, versus that. coming and sitting that. down over some food, over some music, or whatever the case may be, and let's talk about this thing. Yeah. You I, know? I, I come to understand that sometimes that doesn't work. Like, yeah. literally, like, I, I don't know, like, sometimes like, I have a mental capacity, mm-hmm. like, if at least that level... Mm-hmm. Anything I say, right, I don't give a fuck anymore. Right? Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, I came to the point, I said, hey, yo, let's talk, right? Yeah. Let me let me hear what you have to say, mm-hmm. right? And then, like, when you speak, right, I listen to the thing that you mm-hmm. say, and I put it together, and I'm like, okay, you was a whole here, 
got a ticket. I'm big for that. Right? What? <laughs> 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 you know, no, for like, but like, I, I think it's like, uh, like Africans, right? Yeah. There's no sugar coating. Okay. Okay. To, to all, so you just yeah, straightforward. They're, they're okay. straightforward. Like mm-hmm. if you if you're a bum, your parents will be like, "Hey man, you're a bum. You gotta get out of my house." But when I came to America, right, you guys, it's like everybody is a child. Yeah, when, you tiptoe. When, yeah, you got to yeah. tiptoe around people's feelings. Yeah. And I, I never understood that. Like, mm. I can tell someone, bro, you fat as fuck, go to the gym and work out. <laughs> and people be like, oh, why you say that? Okay, but if the person died from a heart attack, oh, well, he was unhealthy. So whereas you're like, wait a minute, the reason why he died, because he was, yeah. he didn't oh, yeah. get it. Yeah. My husband's like that. It was hard for me and him to communicate. He's very blunt like that. And I think yeah. it's because of that Midwest East Coast, I don't know, hey. but <laughs> but it's very he's very blunt. So for me, I am that person where it's like, wait a minute, you uh, did you just yeah. tell me what? you just tell me my breast tape? What you mean? Because hey, yo. you know, wait a minute, you know, I tic tac, I tic tac all the brush, you know. Yeah. But he's that blunt person, and mm. it has helped me because again, my world has always been. Sugar, plum drops, rainbows, and tutus, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm nice with everybody, and I expect everybody to be nice with me. So with when he came into my world, and I was like, oh, he is very blunt. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, so it has given me, like, that balance of, like, it's okay. Now, I, I do say, you know, don't be too, too blunt, you know, but... That's the thing that like it's like it's I think it has to be a balance. No, it gotta be it gotta, <laughs> it gotta, it gotta be some, gotta be, it gotta it add some, to be a balance. It definitely, some no, it definitely you do. Know. Because I had that I had that problem too, because uh-huh. I grew up very, very blunt. Like Really? Like my my, my like my, my folks are very they're gonna say what it We're is. From Caribbean, right? Yeah, but my dad okay. but my, my, my folks from Atlanta though. Like Okay. Like, okay. So it's like growing up, it's like we gonna they just gonna say it. Yeah. And it's gonna hurt your feelings, but then you kinda like it's like it toughens you up a little yeah. bit, but when you go out into the world and you're dating and stuff like that, yeah. and then you go, you taking that out here, yeah, and yeah. then it's like, it's like, wait, I didn't mean it like that, yeah. but it's like people would get taken aback by it. So there's yeah. nothing I wanted to ask. Like I, I'm just gonna say this: like dating, like period. It's like I can I, I, I compare it to like National Geographic, yeah, because it's like the jungle. You got people that coming from abusive households, mm-hmm. um. Physical, sexual, all that mm-hmm, stuff. They mm-hmm. come from all that, all the background. So it's like, even when you coming into a relationship, mm-hmm. it's like sometimes immediately it's like a friction. Yeah, because yeah. y'all don't even know each other like that and where mm-hmm. y'all come from. But then trying to understand that can be hard too. Yeah. So it's like, how did you even as an educator, like, how did you come to like understand like, dang, like relationships and like how how I want to help these people. Like, mm-hmm. how did you even get to that point? Because like. There's obviously a turning point where you said, let me do this. Yeah. So it was, how did that happen? So for as me being an educator, I've always been that safe space in the building for not just the students, but the teachers as well. So the teachers would come in my room before school start, early in the morning or after school. And at first I was like, wow, you know, teachers come in my room to come and talk to me. But I also found out that I was that safe person for them because I would listen and they could honestly say nothing has gotten back around the school about their business or whatnot. And so over time, people would tell me, they were like, you know, I can always talk to you in X, Y, and Z. And same way with students. The students knew that I was that safe teacher. You know, they knew that if it's something detrimental, like molestation or, you know, any of that, I have to report. I'm a mandated reporter. So they, we wouldn't have that understanding, but they can come and talk to me. Um, same way again with the adults. And so over time, I'm just like, okay. Um, and a lot of the teachers that would come in, they would talk about their relationships, either their marriages or their dating. And I would just give them logical, I wouldn't give them what they wanted to hear. Um, I would give them logical suggestions, you know, um, coming from both perspectives. Right. And I even remember having people tell me, you just... <laughs> You just too nice. You just I'm like, no, you you know, I'm like, but you have to look at people from both angles, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm like, sis, you can't, you know, want this man to do X, Y, and Z and you're not doing, you know, mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. So I would give that type of advice. And so it just went from there. And then um I knew that I'm like, you know what? I like relationships. I I've always loved relationships. And I just knew that my love for the classroom was like 
after pandemic, during that pandemic, I knew then it was time for me to go ahead and pursue this full time. Gotcha. Um, I wasn't trying to go back in that classroom after pandemic. That was that was the <laughs> hardest. I'm seeing, I'm seeing them kids now. It's like it's like a thousand yeah, kids in summer school. Listen, the summer school class filled up. They so were I feel filled. That. I, I, I feel that. I, I, like I, that was my turning point. Um, just in life, and, you know, it was just like that life lesson. It's just like. Okay, Trinette, it's time to do something different. You know, this has always been a side job, and and the, and, and it started like literally affecting my physical health. So mm -hmm. that was okay. like God's way of saying, like, it's time for you to go. You yeah. know, so yeah. Okay. You said something about like you said like most people when it comes to relationship, people bring trauma from their own house, yeah. right? Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. my question is like, so like, I've learned that like uh, about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. People, a lot of people like for the, uh, forgiveness, especially. Yeah. You won't be like, oh, forgive, but don't forget. Yeah. But I just learned that it said forget and forget the action, but don't forget the feeling. Yeah. Because you don't want to reciprocate it to somebody else. Yeah. So I like forgiveness. So people, I don't think people really understand what it is. No, they don't. They don't understand where I operate. Um, in my faith, uh, I'm a believer in God, and and His l ultimate love language is love, you mm. know, and forgiveness. And but and, and I want people to understand, forgiveness does not equate to um, staying there taking abuse and whatnot. He did he did not want us to stay in abusive relationships and sure. so forth, you know. And sometimes we we like, well, I can't leave or I can't do this because I have to. No, you can forgive. The forgiveness is for you. As a person, you know, I tell people the forgiveness is for you to move on because that person has a hold on you and what they've done to you. Uh, and I'm not even talking about abuse or whatnot, but just the the malicious intent of them wronging you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to move on. And when you move on, you're you're forgiven. And then, again, that's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we want to rush stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to It happen. Now I'm going to give it a week or two and I'm going to forgive and be done. No, you're not going to forgive in a week. You're nah, not going to forgive not in a month. Mm -hmm. You're not going to forgive in a year. It just gotcha. depends on the offense, you gotcha. know. And so you have to take a look at that and say, am I worthy to do I deserve better? Do what? What is it that I want? You know, and so that forgiveness piece is very crucial along with that. You can forget it. Um, there are a lot of things that happen to me. I have forgotten about it. it is, I've, I've made peace with it, healed from it, and forgave and forgotten. Gotcha. And does that mean, like, if somebody was to ask me about it, yeah, I could probably remember it and be like, okay, but am I going to harp on it? Am I going to, you know, some people have the habit of they're going to keep it rolling. They're going to keep talking about it over and over and over again. That yeah. lets you know they're not healed from it. You know, yeah. when they go to sleep with it, when they wake up with it, or it comes up in a conversation every time, right. you ain't healed from it. So it's a, like... So that's the part where you be like, da, 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 da. Yeah. well, you did this last yeah. time. Yeah. I'm like, yo, we're talking about you eating. Why? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, again, it's one of them triggers. Yeah, you know, okay. something triggered. The part that you be like, okay, you know. And, and so that's why I just emphasize you got to heal you got to recognize those triggers and you got to forgive because if you don't, it's going to continue to be there. It's going to fester, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Forgiveness is it's, it's like, it's a hard thing to do. It is it's hard. hard thing to do. Like, cause it's like, it's like, man, that person did that, that did that. And yeah. it's like, it's hard to just, you know, but it's for you though at the end right. of the day. It is and, it's um, definitely for you. I've had to do that too. Like earlier on, I'm like, man, this person did some BS. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. For real, for real. Like yeah. I want like, but at the same time, it's like, I don't want to go my whole life thinking about that. Yeah. And worrying about what this person did when I jumped was years ago at this yeah. point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like even even your younger years, I remember you said that, you know, you always like loved love and stuff yeah. like that. Like, where does that stem from? That stem from like growing up in your household or does oh, it stem no. from like mm -mm. or stem from stem from an outside source? I think it was just I think I was that I'm the oldest of five and I'm the oldest um of thirteen grandchildren on my mother's side. And so for me, and when I say no, I didn't have my my dad was not an affect affectionate person. He was uh -huh. a very blunt, straight to business. In fact, people probably thought that he was abusing us because he would call me big head and he'd be like, <laughs> oh, okay. you, look, 
But we knew that was his love language. Uh-huh. You know, his thing was, listen, I don't have time to sugar. He was like, I don't have time to sugarcoat you because he was preparing us for the world. The outside, he knew yeah. that he wasn't going to be with us forever and a day, and which was true. He died in 94. So for him, he was like, I got to prepare my children. They don't That's have true. time for the whole sugarcoating game. Exactly. And so for me, he would say, he said, I'm a, you, you're my oldest I'm going to worry about you because you too nice to folks. And he would literally say that. He was like, you just too nice to folks. You said, my other kids, they're going to be fine. I'd be like, but they ain't daddy. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. for real? So for me, I think it just came from my, my grandparents. My mom was very affectionate. Um, and my, my, her side of the family, both sides of the family were um, cool. But I don't know where the whole, I just saw differently. I saw people for the realness like I always I was that person even in school people would just want to come and talk to me because I would listen and I I'm very empathetic I'm I'm very empathetic I'm very caring um and I've taken um personal assessments the Gallup assessments you know because I used to want to try to change my personality because people would see that as passive and weak, right? You know, mm. they'd be like, oh, she too nice and she allowed this, that, and another. And I used to think it was a curse, you know. Mm. Um, at one point in my life, I was very depressed about it because I was like, why can't I be like my brothers and sisters? You know, they can love and they can be done. They don't give people chances, this, that, and another. Right. But I was the opposite. Mm. So I gave people chances. I, I saw the best in everybody. You mm. know what I'm saying? So I would give that chance. So it 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 really came from, I want to say my, the the upbringing of my grandparents or whatnot because they always said that I was a special child. Gotcha. You know, I didn't talk much. I would just listen and observe, and I would try to fit things. You know, I wanted people to be happy. You know, so if you had a uh, if you scraped your knee, I was going in the house to get band aid yeah, sure, or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah oh, to man. make sure. You know, whereas my cousins be like, oh, he all right. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> <You'll live. laughs> yeah, you know, I'm like, yeah. y'all are just so mean. But um, yeah, that's where that, that the whole love and just caring for the world came from. That's where it's like, I think that's like the dopest thing. But it's like, I've seen like, you know, family members, like they, they want to make sure everybody's straight. Yeah. Everybody's straight, like yeah. They like they want to make sure you know the wounds are healed and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I've seen those same people deteriorate too because yeah. nobody made sure they were straight. Exactly. So how do you balance that? Because like that's not an easy job to have, to have as a human being. Is not. And, and it's not even a job though because yeah. it's kind of like you feel like God assigned you to that job. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like how do you even make sure that you're straight? Yeah. Man, you know. Yeah. And that that was a very um doting task because again I I got depressed about it because again I didn't understand who I was you know Mm -hmm. I'm just like why do I want to help people why do I care for people and that's when I learned that I was uh, um that I was experienced being you know I had the uh I was caring and being sympathy uh, having sympathy and compassion Mm -hmm. and and I'm like okay it got to be a balance and so uh, when I started going to therapy you know um she helped me to learn the balance and the difference of it and how to do that. Because you're right, it did take a wear and tear on me because it was like people were taken, 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 but wasn't given back to me. So I didn't know how to replenish that. Mm -hmm. And so I would find myself in this depressive state. So, you know, and it's like, okay, what am I doing? Like, why can't anybody pour back into me? So I didn't have that balance, you know, I didn't have that balance in who I was. And so I did have to take a step back. It was a point where I was like, you know what? I don't like anybody. Like, I don't like myself. I don't want to help nobody, this, that, and the other. But that's not who I, God made me. But he just wanted me to find that balance. And he, so he showed me how to, where to help and who to help. Mm. You know, you can't help everybody. Right. You know, you will run yourself crazy trying to make sure everybody is good. Right. And so I've learned in my 92 years, she'll be 93 next month. She used to tell me all the time, she said, grown people are going to be grown people. She said, you can give them the resources, the tools, then that's it. Let them be. And I said, but auntie, she said, no, because they will drive you crazy. And I was like, you're right. And I learned that they would drive you crazy. 
Yeah. And that, and that's what has started to happen. I was being driven to that point where because I was trying to take care of everybody mm-hmm. and not just family. And not that they, they asked me to, but because I was taking on that role. But friends, you know, I had people who were doing the same stupid stuff. And yes, I said stupid because after a point, it's like. It's like, come on. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, like, sis, come on, let's get it together. So when, it, it, when someone refuses to hear you and take action, mm. that's when you have to step back. Gotcha. You know, you have to step back. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, in the last, like when someone has an issue, there's no communication. Mm-hmm. It's time to cut them off. Yeah. Right. And, uh, oh, yeah. you had a question. So you raise your hand. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I be talking a lot with my hands. Oh, you no, you can, you can, you comfortable. Do you, do, 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 yo, just do you think? Do, what do you, you think? Yeah, yeah, we'll make you comfortable. Like, also, you guys are talking about love and relationship. Like, nowadays, I don't really think there's really love and relationship. People mm. have a mindset of uh, romance yeah. that to, that is love, and to me, I don't believe romance is love. I think it's like it's to be affectionate towards mm-hmm. somebody else. So, what do you think about that? Well, we have to define what is affection and love for each person, because you know, again, if you didn't grow up in a household where you didn't see your parents love on each other, I didn't see my parents love on each other. Me neither. I ain't you see know, either. I mm-hmm. didn't see my dad. Give my I, like I saw him give her flowers, but it may have been because he messed up on something. Where so you know, <laughs> you said like when I think back, and I, don't I, mean, know, I don't mean I don't mean eleven. No, no, man, no, no, you're yeah, right. Because, like, yeah, because I've seen the same thing. Yeah, so I know, you know, yeah. or <laughs> you know, when I look back on my, I was like, oh, I didn't see my mom and dad hug. Or do the whole kissing, you know, the pat on the butt. Like, I didn't see that with my dad doing that to my mom. Gotcha. And and it made me think, how did y'all get five kids? You know, like, I was like, wait a minute. So y'all had time? Because when my last brother was born, one of my questions, I was like, ew, y'all are, (laughs) like, y'all having sex? (laughs) Like, where where does that happen? Yeah. But because they were such private people, Mm -hmm. that generation were private people, right? For sure. Uh And so, for me, I did not see that. I learned affection affection, uh, throughout my college years and from other people, from my friends, you know? And so, I, in turn, I could be affectionate, (laughs) But it's really kind of hard, challenging for me. So, you know, in but in my mind, I'm like, okay, but I'm 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 giving because my my siblings and I, when we hug, we don't hug like like this. We hug from the side, mm. you know. Like oh. people be like, yeah, that's the way the y'all hug. hug. The yeah, hug. like the church <laughs> hug or pat or whatever. And we talk about that. Um, but we did not see that. So it really depends, going back to your question, it depends on the definition and what that other person saw. Because gotcha. sometimes we try to force, well, you know, I'm, I come from a loving family. What, do, what is a loving family? You know? Mm, yeah. My, my family was loving, but they didn't, we didn't hug and we didn't sit around doing kumbaya, you know, type hey. of deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was my loving family. So you're saying that my family wasn't loving because we didn't, hug we didn't have a special you know a high five we didn't do any of that so you have to communicate that with the person that you're with like what and those are some of the questions I tell people I suggest people ask like what is your definition what does love look like to you what does affectionate Mm. look like to you you know how was it displayed because again I didn't see my dad Pat my mom on the back, but yeah. you know, doing the love pats or anything like that. I ain't that. seen none of that either, so I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know, there is a, but I knew uh, there was love, you know, uh, but no, nah, I didn't see that. No, there was not, guys, because I was in a situation when someone was like, "Love me the way I love you," and I was like, mm-hmm. I, "I, I don't, I don't understand how you, how mm-hmm. you love me," because I haven't lived where you have been. I haven't mm-hmm. experienced where you, because my first heartbreak was really my stepmother. Mm-hmm, so okay. to me, it's like my household mm-hmm. before even my dating yeah. was full of chaos and all that. Mm-hmm. So when I, so yeah. learning the process to really be affectionate and being loving to yeah. me, made me really understand why people, a lot of people don't know how to love someone. No, we don't. Yeah. It, it, and, we, and, and, it's, and it's okay. We have mm-hmm. to learn to say it's okay and this is where it comes. is a process. And we have to be willing to 
we're not patient. We don't give each other grace. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ah, women don't give men grace. <laughs> <laughs> men give women you think grace. They, you think men give us grace? Yes. I mean, we we gonna we gonna like we gonna, we gonna be hard, right? Yeah, yeah. We might be yeah. hard because that's that's the everything. Like yeah. we as men, we're na- we're naturally hard. Yeah. Even when we're against men, if, if we if a man go into something like that, hey man, I men the fuck up. The yeah. man will be like, hey bro, you alright? Yeah. But we give grace. It's yeah. just like, but give woman, yeah, bro. Y'all yeah, we like, give y'all a hard time, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we right. do. I'm y'all sorry. Say, oh, I forgive you. <laughs> yeah. And then you just like, uh, y'all do the same thing. You be like, bitch, you do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're right. We don't, we don't give y'all the grace because we have these, we have these high expectations of what the world says that you all are supposed to be. Mm. We also have um, a lot of these expectations of what we saw our fathers that most of us did have fathers in in our household. So when we see the men in our households, our grandfathers, our fathers, our uncles, Mm -hmm. we expect the next man to do the same thing and not allowing y'all to be who y'all are, you know? And again, I I can be one to say that was me as well because um, that was a mistake, you know, even up until now, that's a mistake. And I, I often apologize to my husband because I'm like, you know, I expected you to be like my dad in doing this or mm-hmm. whatnot. But I didn't realize that my dad was a different person. He's mm-hmm. a different person. Right. My uncles and my grandfather, they were different people, right? Mm-hmm. So it is like that blueprint we want y'all to be. But again, we have we don't allow you all to be who you are. And so those expectations, we don't allow y'all grace. And I do want to apologize to... On behalf of, you know, <laughs> especially Gen, Gen X. Hey. I want to apologize on behalf of us because we, we do not. We don't give y'all grace. We, okay. ooh, we hard on y'all. Yeah. 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 Elsa, you said something very interesting. Yeah. Right? And I think that was my question. You said something about being a strong black woman. Mm-hmm. Like, that's like the, how the world view you guys. You got to have the makeup, the hair, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But my question is like, have women... Who call themselves strong black women ask a man how do they view a strong black woman? Mm. I don't I don't good ask I don't mm-hmm. view a strong black woman as a as a woman who's like, you know, wanna defend yeah. herself. I view a strong black woman who can be compassionate. Mm. That's that's why I view a black uh, strong black woman. You know, people women be like, Oh, I'm out here working, I'm out here doing this, I'm out da 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 but like yeah, to do that's, that's the yeah. world. That's the world we live in. Yeah, they can kind of believe for that. Yeah, because like if you don't work, you don't get your your bills paid. Right. If you don't have a car, you're not gonna get to work. Right. So people are trying to bring down the things that you do mm-hmm. as oh that has to be praised. Yeah. But to me, it's like like my was like, how come y'all don't ask us? Yeah, I, you know what? I think for y'all's generation versus my generation. Uh, we're not asked that question. And in fact, I, I, I threw away my strong black woman card years ago. <laughs> I'm, I was, I'm like, I'm tired of being a strong black woman because it was killing us, yeah. you know, um, because we had to do everything. And you're right. It, it's like, okay, if I'm a single woman, I have to pump my own gas. That's, that's a necessity, right? I'm yeah. not going to sit there and wait for a guy to pump my gas. I got to open up my door mm. that I'm walking through. I, I, you know, I got to pay my bills. This is just life skills. And mm-hmm. we've turned it around. We twist it as, oh, I'm a strong black woman. No, those are life skills. You're, that's what you're supposed to use. That's what, yeah. You didn't come out the womb with somebody pampering you, right? So mm-hmm. in turn, we, we did, we took that, we ran with it, and it killed us. It killed us. It killed our femininity. Mm-hmm. Um, it killed our spirit. It killed our... Um, our cognitive think it like it destroyed the average black woman because mm-hmm. now we're trying to make sure not only are we okay, but y'all are okay. And in turn, we're angry. You know, we turn out and that's the reason why you see the quote unquote angry black woman. It's not necessarily angry at y'all. It's angry at the world because the world has put this title on us and we have to live up. Whereas our counterparts, guess what they're doing? They're loving on their husbands and their families and they're living their lives. Mm. And I'm talking about white women. You know what I'm saying? 
they are they are enjoying their womanhood, their femininity, mm-hmm. while we're out here stressing and stroking and dying at an early at, yeah. beefing over yeah. unnecessary, over nothing, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. over hair and nails and all of this unnecessary stuff versus enjoying who God put us with and whatnot. Yeah. So that whole strong black woman, and nobody has stopped to ask us, like, how are we doing? And mm-hmm. so when y'all, I mean, in general, black men don't ask us, then we get the attitude. We ask. Do y'all? Yes, we do. How do y'all I think, ask? I think we, I, we do. Probably we, y'all we generation. Do. We, no, no, all, probably just all, us right here. Most generation generation us right here. Ask. No. Yeah. Like, all generations no. ask, hey. No. Oh, you, th- this, this is how we ask. Uh-huh. Because, like, really, everybody has a different way of mm-hmm. receiving information. Yeah. Like I said. So, but we, every man always asks, mm-hmm. are you okay? Mm. That's that's if every man that asks every woman, hey, are you okay? Now what comes next after that? Because you want something. No, we it's nothing that we want. Mm, okay. Like, I mean, I don't know about all the guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah. Some yeah, guys might yeah. be like, hey, I'm sure they get so good. Right, you, right, you, so that, that has been yeah. yeah, like you speaking from like a perspective of like what we would be what we yeah. would be thinking, like oh, yeah. on a general yeah, level. Because like, like, yeah. yeah. it's really a question, because like even like uh like me, I'm uh like I don't know about all the men, but if someone asks me if I'm okay, I'm mm-hmm. just be like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Really, yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. So, but I was like, yeah, you know. But I don't like, like you said, it, everybody needs a, a safe space. Yeah. But if if I'm the man that you are, mm-hmm. and I'm giving you that space, it's not like, hey, are you okay? Yeah. Like, tell me what's up. Yeah. Don't and I commend you for doing that. Uh, and the reason why I say it, it hasn't been asked to us because it's always something followed behind it, okay. an yeah. agenda, hidden agenda, right? Yeah. And so again, that goes back to that unhealed, the trigger. So now I've I've learned to accept when men ask me, "How are you doing, sis? You know, you okay?" Like I have, I'm I'm blessed to have some cool brothers in my corner that ask me, mm. "Sis, you okay? You need to take a step back from you know podcasting or you know business or whatever. Yeah. Do that." So they genuinely ask. So I commend y'all for doing that and continue to do that, especially for the net set of women, black mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. I always say those are my nieces, right? So I want to set them up so they won't be where we are, angry and just, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time we see a black man, what, what, what you want? <laughs> what, 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 who are you looking at? You know, we can't even accept, yeah, but I think, you know? I think too, like, yeah. the strong black woman thing, I think it just like, I don't, I don't like, I don't really like it because yeah. like I think it comes from a, a space of like, oh, she can take a lot, she can be yeah. battered, and she gonna, she gonna still be like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like a, a dog that can take a beating. That's how, yeah. that's how it's like. I think cinemas has caused that to be mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like a the outlook. Tyler Perry, you done messed up, boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. like, because I think like those films. Has played a big part in our culture to yeah. the point where it's like, dang, like yeah. a strong black woman, she can she can take a lot, she can yeah. get cheated on, yeah. she can get abused, and she's still gonna be right there. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I think it's just like a, where there's something got to be some type of new reinvention of something that can be yeah. like brighter than what that term is. Well, mm-hmm. what y'all you know what are doing saying? is the new term. Mm-hmm. You know, what your actions by saying, "I'm gonna ask these sisters how they doing," and I'm gonna give them that space to talk and tell us how they feel. Yeah, for sure. You know, listening to them, that's that that what y'all are doing. That's what you're. That's how you're recreating and moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, is there hope for our generation? Yes, Hell there's nah. still. I really get you. <laughs> nah, it they, is hope for us. You, what's, what's the word they call you? Sassy. If like, oh, you oh yeah, I did hear <laughs> that new term. Sassy. Yeah, well, yeah. What, what, do you, what do you think about that? I hate it. <laughs> it's emasculation it really, uh, for uh, for black uh, men. All of a sudden, where did this come from? Like y'all are sassy now. Like who who created that? And I can tell you who probably did. One of those women who don't know how girl how is. how. A woman should be treated. Right. So mm-hmm. now she wants to call every nice dude sassy. And now we're hopping on this trend of calling y'all sassy. I think it mm. started with somebody in one of these other communities that... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to say phase, though? <laughs> I, think, I think it's somebody in one of these other communities mm-hmm. that played behind a fake account and started mm-hmm. saying stuff like this. Yeah. And so black men are sassy if a... If, if, uh, do has an opinion that's not the popular opinion. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like... Yeah, I started seeing it. I was like... Sad. And I actually heard a, a black woman call a black man. I, it was another trend. Uh, a man, a black man is sassy if he cooks. And Bro. I'm like, I'm looking nah, at all nah. of these comments. First of all, it was sad that it got 
all of these comments. comments. Yep. And then it was even what was worse were a lot of the women, mm-hmm. black women who were agreeing with it. And I, you know, and, and some, a lot of times it's not good to pop, jump on any of that. And I'm just reading and I wanted to, I was typing, you know how you type stuff and yeah. then you erase it, right, yeah. delete, delete. Yeah. Cause it's not, that's not the conversation. I said, I'd be doggone. I call a black man sassy for doing the right thing. Yeah. So y'all don't have to worry about that coming from me and my tribe. Yeah, that's no, that's like, so crazy. It's, Cause like the toughest, like I grew up around, I would say pretty tough dudes. Like yeah. when I was younger Yeah, and they were cooking for their women. Yeah. Like, that was, like, regular. Like, yeah. Oh, like, but you want something to eat? All right, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to get whatever we need to get. And I'm going right. to cook when I get home. And right. she didn't even touch enough. Right. She ain't even right. touching nothing in the Yo, kitchen. I'm right. tell, I'm That's tell, what I've seen, I'm though. Tell every up, man out there, bro. Yeah. If you don't know how to cook, bro, you're going to starve. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, like, like, I wouldn't uh, expect my husband, like, that's me calling him sass. Oh, you said no. Like, when I ask, I'm like, he's a chef. I Do you know how thankful I am? Like, and, and again, I'm like, just because I'm a woman, I don't, didn't mean, yeah. I didn't know how to cook like that. I don't like cooking. Yeah. I like cleaning. <laughs> so a man coming along that can cook? What? You know what's sad, right? They'll call us sassy, but they'll love show garden. They'll be like, oh, he's the, I like, yo, I want to try his food. Like, oh, the soft day. And I'll be like, well, homie going to cook you like something nice. Right. And be like, no, nah, you want that. Yeah. So like, uh, like, cause even you were saying something about um, like being masculine as a woman. Like, I even heard a story where a woman was like, "Oh, it's from back then when after slavery, and then women had to do things." And that to me, I was like, "Yo, there's, there's as a woman, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being masculine, but there's a moment to be masculine." Yeah. yeah. Like for example, like and then like yeah, let's I'm, I'm not name. Matter of fact, let's use the lingo, right? Mm-hmm. People call uh, masculinity like being strong. Whatever, right? You're right. Because familiarity being soft, like cooking in the kitchen, right? So as if we, like, we we both have the same thing, right? We have uh, masculine energy, we have feminine, energy. right? So I just think like people have lack of knowledge of what really that is before people are jumping into it. Yeah. Because even if you go back to slavery time, women will be like, oh, when the slavery, the black man saw us getting raped by the white man. Yeah. And I was like, but also think about it, right? The, what, the black man got degraded. He was right. beat. Cut, castrated. Yeah. Castrated. Yeah. And was cut off. Yeah. And then brought him, set down where he has no power. Yeah. And then so you can see. And I was like, yo, people, and that comes with forgiveness. You yeah. don't really have to forgive. Yeah. Like, because like the end of the day, I tell people all the time, I'm not your enemy. Right. right? I'm be, I'm, I'm saying that too. That's great. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. that. I'm I saying say that, that too. all. I'm like, listen, yeah. I'm not your enemy. Yeah. Listen, how can we make this thing work together? Yeah. With one life to live, I don't have but fifty plus more years on this earth. Like yeah. you know, I don't have time to be combative with the next human being. Right. Like you know, let's let's make this work. And if we're not a good fit, like keep it moving. You know, mm-hmm. and that's in all of my relationships. Relate, you know, with family, with friends. With whomever, yo, I I need to make my my goals in life is to be peace at mm-hmm. peace, you know, enjoy mm-hmm. what God has for us on this earth. So I don't have time to be sitting up in in. All right, when I saw that, I was like, Sessa, I'm like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> here goes something else that's going to divide which community though. Mm-hmm. Ours, Sucks. and it's going to divide relationships. Mm-hmm. And you got to look at the bigger part. The enemy does not want us to have healthy relationships. Facts. Point blank. So now you got this new trend of sassy men. Mm. So now what's going to happen? The women going to start looking at black men. Oh, I know he's sassy. This, that, and that. Then you're going to start it. No, we're not going to do that. So what I do encourage people to do is shut it down. Don't entertain it. You mm-hmm. know, don't even let it come your way because it that's how it grows. Mm-hmm. So if you hear somebody saying, oh, he a sassy, he a what? Shut it down. My, I know that's what me and my tribe would do in a heartbeat. We mm-hmm. shut things down because we're not going to allow it to grow because mm-hmm. that's what happens in our community and in our relationships. Mm-hmm. And then now you have this new set of animosity between. There is so much hate between black men and black women. It's it's For real. Pathetic. It's disheartening. It is sad. Yeah. It's crazy. I hate you for no reason. Bad. You hate me for no reason. And we're now we're finding all of these things wrong with each other versus sitting down and say, "Hey, I don't I don't hate you. I just some things that you do. 
a woman did to me or a man did to me, I haven't been able to forgive it and forget about it. So yeah. now I just lump all of y'all in the same That's category. It. It's crazy though, because it's like, you know, like there's there's a lot of beefing online, yeah. like more than anything. Yeah. But like, let's say like I go out, right? I go out to a restaurant, mm -hmm. you see a dude all over his girl and she all over him. Yeah. Like it's happening at this restaurant, multiple, multiple uh, booths. Yeah. It's happening. I'm, it kind of tripped me out when I was like, damn. Like, this is online, but in real life, I be seeing cool shit yeah. majority of the time. Yeah. I'm not really seeing too much craziness in real life yeah. like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, online, it's like, are y'all all y'all single and just being in situationships? Yeah. Because yeah. I go outside. <laughs> it's, they're chilling. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm seeing right. big <laughs> wedding, <laughs> wedding rings right. and everything. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, because like, you know, just the, the family unit, I see a lot of beautiful shit when I go outside. Yeah. But then yeah. online, it's like, and they, they lead to some other questions. I wanted to ask, because mm -hmm. based off your generation and mm -hmm. the younger generation, how much is it a difference as far as like a uh, beef? Who? How always, big is it? Is there, always, is, there, is there a big one or is it a small difference? Beef, my it's guy. A, I would say for me, it's a big difference in beef. Uh, okay. with what's going on because now we have social media. Right. So it, like you say, everything now is on social media. You mm -hmm. everybody's airing out everything on social media. Right. You know Why? I don't Why? know with this fascination of one every I'm a very private person, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want you knowing what what me and my husband fussing and fighting about, yeah. right? You know, I'm not gonna put it I'm not gonna put him on blast out there. I'm not gonna put out subliminal messages, you mm. know. I'm not about to change up my last name all of a sudden. And, you know, you got people, that, well, what's going on? No, I, we don't want to talk about things. We don't want to have, sit down and have that conversation in-house. Mm. Because, again, it's going to go back to that accountability piece. Because now, you, now it's just going to be the both of you, whereas I got an audience now. So if I make this public... Guess what? I'm making this beef public. So now I got to get you on my side. Mm. And he, I'm going to try to get him on my side right. and leave out the other person. So everybody's trying to gain that, that uh, you know, alliance with the next person so they can gang up versus like, but you were just sleeping with him. Fuck. So what, what you... <laughs> Facts. You you were just all Yo, that y'all were, were all traveling that guy and whatnot. Now, now y'all hate each other. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So right. now y'all hate each other. Like, you know, you just had a whole life with each other, but now y'all at odds with each other. And now you want to put it out there for what? So instead of you sitting back and talking and say what happened or whatnot, you want to get make sure everybody grabs a side. Mm -hmm. And more than likely, as a woman, especially, I want to make sure all my folks know that he was wrong. You know, because most of the times the dudes are not going to, y'all not going to put that stuff out on online. It's it's the girls, you know. Nah, that's I ain't gonna, doing that. Right. That's cool. So, I'm going to be like, man, stop being a bitch. And yeah, girls. for sure. And <laughs> right. I don't want somebody to tell me that if I did that. Right. I ain't going to lie. So like. most of the time it's the women that's doing that, right? Yeah. So now we got all our girlfriends and some of the guy friends on our side so they can gang up and not get in the full the story. Friends, and bro, I'd be like, hey, bro, shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I ain't doing so, it. Yeah, don't even talk I would to say yeah, the beef sure. has, it has grown because of, of social media and, mm -hmm. you know, um, there was a time back in the day my grand, when my grandparents fought you didn't know Madea and Cornelia's don't fault. You didn't know nothing. You didn't know nothing because yeah. they were at the family reunion just as happy as going. Up. You know, mm -hmm. the next thing I know, I'm like, oh, y'all divorced. Oh, I thought, you know, yeah. but they knew how to work on it, you know, and, and they knew this ain't everybody's business, you nice. know. Now we want everybody to know for what likes and views. Facts. That's all it is. I think it's election. I call it the election. People want to want to be on the voter side. They want to vote, yeah. get the most votes, see who was right yeah, or wrong. Yeah. I, I yeah. call it the election yeah. for sure. The, I, listen, I, I, I like that. I yeah. Even call. I just think of people just really only care about their feelings yeah. and what they want to hurt. Because I even when the situation, I was like, look, uh, you're getting too loud. Or we go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Have that conversation. I, I, Mm -hmm. And she didn't, she, she didn't want that. Mm -hmm. She kept going and going. I have a daughter. It's mm -hmm. not healthy. Yeah. She kept, ch -ch -ch -ch. and I was like, look, that's cool. Yeah. Like, for example, like, we have our issues, right? Right. That's not our issues. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to be, we don't have to have friends, whatever. Just, we can settle every that between each other. Right. If we can't, come to, you know, the other two right. can settle this. Or just go a separate part. So like uh like 
I don't know, like dating, like you were talking about dating. Dating is to become, I can it's say, so, yeah, it's, 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 Amazon it's or cutthroat. It, it's crazy. Beyond cutthroat. <laughs> it is. I, you know, when I was dating before um, I met him, uh-uh. um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, it was, um, I want to say it was interesting. But again, I did not fall into that. I mean, I've had a, I had a guy that, he wanted me to be in the gym with him. I was like, do I look like I want to be in the gym with you? He was just call you fat. <laughs> yeah, like, you and, but, you know, and I did hear that. I was like, he was like, oh, I'm going to the gym. And he was one of those gym buffs, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to, I got cute workout gear, but I'm not, <laughs> I don't, first of all, I don't like sweating like that. And no, then I'm sweet. not working out to work. Like, I, that's too much work, you yeah, know? I, you, can't, you can't do that though. Right. Like, you can't do that. Like, I, but I told him, yes, right? And then he can. tried. Huh? No, no. no this, <laughs> he this, tried. Why you, this is why you can't do that. It's like, you mm-hmm. can't force nobody to like, oh, come work out with me. Cause it's right. like a woman, telling a woman that like, come on, even a woman that's the most in shape. Yeah. Oh, I mean, but I mean, you, you had you... those ones here in, especially here in Atlanta, who liked that, right? Yeah, yeah. But he was trying to make me, and I just, I just no. finally had to say, listen, bro, um, <laughs> it ain't gonna work. I'm thick right. over here, and mm-hmm. I'm not about to be skinny, mini like you want me to. And like, I had to really tell him that. So then we got on this. Oh, you're not, you know, you don't like your body health. I said, no, I eat very well. Mm-hmm. So then that's when it became like, listen. Thank you. I'm good because okay. you're now I can see the control, Ooh, you know. So okay. for me, it started to. So then that day, then I was like, OK, then I dated somebody who was the opposite, who wanted to do everything for me, who wanted to take care of me. Mm. He even told me I can quit my job and he will oh. have this, that and the other. For me, it was a red flag because now you're not listening to what I want. Gotcha. So yeah. in a, another woman's world. Hostage. Yeah, you yeah, know, really. like in another woman's world, that probably would have been fine. But if I'm telling you that these are my dreams and I want to do this, that, and other, he was like, you don't have to worry about that. Like he he said I broke his heart because I turned him down. Then he got into the, no, women don't want a good man. I said, I never said you were not a good man. Ooh. I said, you're just not the man for me. Yeah, because yeah, again, yeah. you're not listening to me. Okay. You're telling me all these things that you can do and that you want to do for me. But where did you sit down and ask me? You didn't take, when you took me out, you didn't ask me where I want to go eat. You just mm-hmm. took me to wherever you wanted to. You wanted to show off your fancy car. I'm mm-hmm. not impressed by all of that. You know, you wanted to do all these things, but you didn't hear me. Gotcha. You didn't listen to me. You know, so that I was like, yeah, the dating thing. So, I mean, it, it could be, it was interesting. Um it is, I, you know, listening to my nieces, I'm just like, but here's the thing, the mm-hmm. dating, we, we, we have not defined dating. You see what I'm saying? Dating is really collecting that data from different people. We're collecting data. So if I take so, you to a cup it's, 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 of tea, right? If do you, not tell me I want to go to a three. Bitch, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just resume in your ass. The fuck? Yeah, yeah, it really, it really no, is like, literally. Like, I, I, bro, I basically do that. Oh, if you don't take me to a fine dining yeah. room, I don't know you. I don't even know our you. Our first like that. date, our first meet and greet was where. Chipotle. Hey, I like Chipotle. I like we were, Chipotle. It was in Chipotle, <laughs> you know? And then by when he told me he was a chef, I already know I like I like, we ain't going out no places because here goes a chef. Most <laughs> chefs don't like it eating out. They want to cook yeah. at home, right? Yeah. But our first meet and greet, our first official date was at Chipotle because yeah. it was just that. We were there to have to have conversation. Did did I want him to take me to a five-star? No, because again. I knew what I wanted. That's right. You could take me to okay. a five star restaurant <laughs> yeah, and be check. the, you know, <laughs> literally be the scum of the earth. That don't yeah. mean anything. And and second of all, I'm not gonna eat all that food because I'm gonna eat. Mm-hmm. I ain't one of them little girls who gonna eat it, get a salad. Yeah, so they, be trying, they be trying to portion stuff. Yeah, be like, I'm be like, like, I'm here to eat. One little quarter piece of a sandwich. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like man, no. Uh, but our meet and yeah. greet at Chipotle was just, it was good because that's where I was collecting data from, you okay. know, telling him what I like and vice versa and whatnot. And then if we decided to proceed with each other, it wouldn't be no big loss because I think your meal, my meal cost, was, the whole meal was $20. Hey. So, you know, it was no big loss or whatever. Yeah. So I tell people, I encourage nieces, my nieces and nephews, when you're dating, explore different people while you're dating. This mm. is, that's that era. So don't get caught up in one person. Take them to coffee houses. And if she don't want, 
okay, ma'am, I'm sorry. I, I'm just, we just having a good time, you know, chilling, yeah. talking or whatever. You want me to, like this whole, don't take me here, this, that, and another, it's crazy. Mm -hmm, really. It is very crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't get it. Like these, these. It's social media. It is. Because I, I literally asked him, like, I think uh, I was like, hey, Mimi, um, I like, I like hiking. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was like, hey, uh, do, you want, do you like hiking? And they said, yeah. Yeah. I was like, you want to go meet me so we can like get to know that, have chop it up. Right. They'll go ghost. Okay, cool. Not, not big of a deal. Like, and then one chick, she's like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm a fine dining kind of chick. Mm. I was like, okay, I'm, I have okay, a question. Okay, fine dining. How often do you take yourself out fine That's dining? the real question. Exactly. That's the real she question. Told me, That's, <laughs> she don't do that. Exactly. So I'm like, how the fuck do you want me to do something that you do for, <laughs> you don't do for yourself? And that that is the uh, God's honest truth. When these women are out here saying all this stuff, it's the uh, fantasy that they have, mm. and it's what their friends then told them. Girl, you know he need to take you here and there, or whatever. Definitely. But you ain't took yourself there. Before I got with Chef, I went to fine dining restaurants on my own or with my girlfriends mm. or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I did that stuff for myself. Yeah. I didn't look for a man to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I wouldn't. I, what I'm going to ask him to take me there first on our first date? Because if I don't like him, what I'm going to say, oh, yeah, I got me a good meal. That's, hey, that's, so, that's like, yeah, that's but, it's, my thing. but if you got to eat on some dates like that. But like, it's like, it's like that junk, first of all, like the food don't be that good to me. I'd have been at all the majority of the fine dining restaurants. Right. Like on a date or by myself with my homies or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And all of it is like, well, no, that's the people who do And definitely don't go with a chef. No, I'm telling y'all now. Yeah, they don't go with a chef. 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 They don't go with a chef. like, hey, take that back. Yeah, you gotta take that back. But I do get that, like, fine dining, right? People just view fine dining because of the. No, finally, it's an experience. You're right, like, right. Like, I, I, you know, I used to cook, and you know, I wanted to be an executive chef. Yeah. And it's like when you speak to chef, right? They just want to give you an experience. Right. People, people lack the knowledge of what fine dining is. Right. So like. So uh, now you got all these girls around on social media. I, oh, he ain't take me. Yeah, he ain't this, that, yeah, and that. Like, Benny Hanna really, is nasty. Yeah, Benny Hanna yeah, yeah, is like, man, like, come is on. Bad. But then you have all these other avenues of dating. Like you said, going hiking, going game, going to game. I think I read, and this was, I, I thought it was fake, but the girl, obviously, this guy took her to a basketball game, and he ended up having seats way up in the bleachers, right? Mm -hmm. She got up and she was on in, on live and she was like, I'm about to leave. Um, this, um, sorry, man. Like she was going in and she left her date at the game. And I'm like, wow. Hey. This man took whatever money he had mm. and bought tickets for you. Yes, they may have been in the bleachers, but it was the thought, you know? Thanks. But you got up being rude. First of all, mm -hmm. it ain't nothing cute about that because you were rude. Now, if you didn't like that, you would have set your behind through, you know, just sit through it and then mm -hmm. been like, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm not, not really yeah. good on the height, uh, you know, bleacher type of deal. Maybe we could. But you never know what this man would have. He may have had you front row with a side court. What they? The, yeah, on the uh, sideline mm -hmm. or whatever. Sideline yeah. <laughs> tickets or whatever. Yeah, court side tickets. Yeah. yeah. But the fact that you got on social media... For all these likes and views, and now that it went viral, cause mm -hmm. you did it maliciously. Yeah, like the Cheesecake Factory. Chain. Yeah, Homie you know. Was like, I'm gonna take you home. And right. She's like, what? She got quiet after that. She did. <laughs> like, like, come on, like stuff like that. We're doing and we're falling for all of this mess. Mm -hmm. Versus mm -hmm. saying, when is it gonna stop? Mm -hmm. Like, and so what's happening now? You have men. You have good men who are like. They don't know what to do with us because they're confused. Like, I'm trying to take you to a nice place. You don't like it. Then I'm trying to do, you know, do what's right, but you don't like it. Um, so now the the women are confusing the men. So yeah, now y'all like, I don't want to do it no more. Right. You don't want to do it no more. Like, I, it, it do make sense. Like, it's like, at the end of the day, I'm trying to get to know you. Right. You're not my wife. Right. Um, we don't have kids together. Right. So even now, there's a there's a thing saying like, if you don't do husband things, mm -hmm. I'm not doing wifing things. First of all, you're not a wife. Right. If that's your mindset, <laughs> you're right? not a wife. Uh, you're and not I'm a gonna be real. Like the ring does not make you a wife. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> real, so though. a woman gonna be like, oh, you don't put no. That does not make you a wife. Period. Yeah. That a ultimatum wife stuff. is within yeah. you. Is that like, you a female? Yes. You. I'm a man. Yeah. Yes. A wife. If that's what you are, yes. If you're a husband, yeah. yes. 
But if you if you doing the work, saying like, oh, I need a ring because yeah. like you are not a wife. You yeah. just you just a pain in the ass, and homie need to get rid of you. The same thing with, with uh, you with, are very blind. Yeah, the same thing with wife. He gonna tell you. He gonna tell you. If a, if gonna a tell man you. is not being a, a husband yeah. to his wife, right? Homie, yeah. you're not being a husband. You're just yeah. being a pain in the ass and. Yeah, and like, yeah. do we right. forget to, to to really like date for the for the friendship first? We have, no, we, because everybody that's what, that's wants what I, to get. That's what I do. Like, everybody wants to get married because they think married marriage is oh, it it is fun. Don't get me wrong, it's fun. Mm-hmm. But what people don't understand, marriage is a ministry and it's work. So what happens is we get caught up with the weddings. Mm. We getting caught up with the 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 dresses and the bridal shower and bridal parties, and mm. we're getting caught up with the aesthetics of weddings, mm. and nobody talks about the marriage. Yeah. And so now you want you have women who are still on this timeline, like the majority of us in our day, we were on these timelines. You got to get married by a certain age. You got to do this, that, another. Mm. But nobody sits back and talks about what. The marriage entails. So mm-hmm. now you have these women giving y'all ultimatums. You don't put a ring on it, this, that, another, and you're rushing people into marriage. You gotta go. <laughs> exactly. And, and versus having that conversation mm-hmm. of like, wait a minute, I'm still trying to fill this out. Date, enjoy each other, mm-hmm. build up that relationship, you mm-hmm. know, um, go through those hard, difficult times, you know, and when, once you start. Getting deeper into, you know, my husband courted me. So, you know, that courtship and then the dating and then we, you know, yeah. we're navigating. Yeah. Now, does that mean it's perfect? No, but you're because you're always still learning. Right. Mm-hmm. But what's happening now, people are really they're they're fascinated with the wedding. Mm-hmm. You know, how many bridesmaids I'm going to have, the that's, honeymoon and all of this. That's the wrong way And to then the first sign of marriage ha- happens, guess what's happening? You on social media talking about you getting divorced. Yeah. Because you could not, you didn't, you didn't know he was going to lose his job. You didn't know COVID was going to hit. Mm-hmm. You didn't know that she got sick. You didn't know that, you know, yeah. Death uh-huh. happened or whatnot. You wouldn't prepare for that. You would prepare for the wedding. You mm-hmm. wouldn't prepare for marriage. Oh, this, is, this is another thing too. Like you know, because we all know the economy is trash right now, right? The who? The economy. economy. Yeah, it's trash. Yeah, it is. Right? It is. And you know when? Let's like a man is like. This is like a thing. Like, oh, she left me when I was broke or whatever, right? That that whole thing. That is. Yeah. That's a thing, right? But I look at it like from a different perspective. It's like okay, you might have been broke, right? Yeah. But like, how did you handle it though? Yeah, in a relationship. Mm. Yeah, because like you could have been like really, you know, frustrated. But I think that you can grow to like deal with it a certain way. Like, yeah, like because all a woman wants to wants to do is like really laugh. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And know mm-hmm. like it's gonna be all good. So it's like, yeah. how would you? What would you say to the men out there that's kind of like struggling right now? But how would you tell them to handle their relationship if they girl's still around? Like if they dealing with that? I would say you have to have that conversation. Like you have to be mm-hmm. so honest and it's going to be a hard, and this is what I want people to understand. Communication is not going to always be rainbows and tutus. Right. You're going to have to have those hard conversations. Mm-hmm. It's you, Somebody's feelings going to get hurt in that conversation, right? But what happens at the end, at least you get to lay it all out on the table mm-hmm. and you go from there. This whole, you know, my man broke and this, that, and another. Um, so here's the thing, like, so what were your expectations when you got with your man? Like, what what did you expect to do? What what did you do to contribute, especially if you're in a long-term relationship? Mm. What are you doing to contribute to your financial plan? Did y'all sit down and, and talk about finances? You know, no. because a lot of times we don't talk about finances. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We just assume he got money, I got money, we're going to put it together. No, that's not how it works. Uh, what? You know what I'm saying? Nah. <laughs> it's, they're not going to put it together. It's not going to work. I heard your money is my money. Right. My money. But like, it yo. can work, though. It has to be that team mentality. Yeah, let's you know? be like, let's get this money. Let's like, get this let's money together. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, yeah. And let's devise a plan. Let's get this. You, a relationship should have vision. Facts. And something that I um, had one of my services is a vision board for couples. We mm. do it for a band, for everything else, but we don't do a vision for our marriage and our relationships. Even if you don't want to be married, but you're in a long-term relationship, you still need vision, vision. because mm. I don't care what people say, oh, marriage is just a piece of paper. It's a covenant between you, God, and that person. Mm. However, we know that laws 
are, are affected by that piece of paper as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a vision in place, you didn't put in all this work all these years being somebody's spouse and you at the end and you ain't getting jack. Thanks. I didn't seen it happen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But because there was no vision for that, that relationship. So I would say, what is that vision, financial vision for that, you know, because everybody's going to go through a hardship in your relationship, right. you know, you'll go through, we didn't know, COVID hit us out of the blue. Everybody lost a job. Everybody, <laughs> you know, everybody. Some people had an a entrepreneur, you know, uh, come up. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the, you. <laughs> you know, which was good. That was their season. Everybody's season. But then the jobs, you had layoffs. Layoffs, Unexpected crazy. layoffs. Mm -hmm. So what happened? What, what were you going to do? You are going to leave your spouse? Because this was a worldwide. <laughs> you know, yeah. it happened. So what were you going to do then? You left your partner? Uh -huh. You know, one of, one of my favorite movies is Fireproof. And one of the... Um, it's an older movie um, about relationships in it. One of the statements in it, you never leave your partner behind, mm. but you have to have that mentality. Gotcha. This is my partner. This is my team. You know, I'm not a sports person, but I look at, you know, the team, the captain and, and how you're there for your team, your team members, right? You're not going to leave your partner behind. That's it. Like, no yeah. matter what. Like, you're going you're gonna to fight. You're going to... That person don't know how to swim. You're going to grab their hand and you're going to keep trekking with it, you know? Ooh, I don't know. Cause it's late. <laughs> I don't know because there's some people that don't know how to swim will drown you, though. So well, that is true. That is, I, don't wanna, I don't know how to swim. <laughs> and he would tell me to her, but you listen now. You don't know how to swim. But I do expect him to at least have held, held my hand. Now, if he did not hold my hand yeah. and trying, yeah. then peace because you didn't try. Yeah, I got you. But if you told me... You know, listen, the current's going to get you. You got to hold my hand as tight. This is what I'm going to do. At least I know you tried. You know what I'm saying? But if you didn't grab my hand, then mm -hmm. we, nah, then we, you, you're not my partner because you didn't try. Because mm -hmm. you yeah. said something like people, people get married for the wedding, mm -hmm. right? So like people really don't understand what really marriage is. Yeah. Like if you really read, if you go to history, mm -hmm. like marriage was, bes was between the, the people who had money. Yeah. So between two families will come together and mm -hmm. build their wealth. So yeah. nowadays, right, um, like now this money in a relationship is such a major thing. Yeah. So for example, you got this woman out here saying, if you don't make 100K, mm -hmm. you don't make 100K. Then like, mm -hmm. they're not even <laughs> want to talk to you. Yeah. And to me, it's like, so when the relationship, when the love become a financial burden for both parties? Yeah. It, it that, <laughs> Again, you have to make that very clear what you want in the beginning. If that's what you want, if you want that high value um, person who's going to make that, I I I did have a friend. Um, she was like, I want a man who's going to make at least eighty five, ninety, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. And I did ask. I said, Well, how much you making? Damn. I know I wasn't quite as blunt, you know. <laughs> you had to be careful. You got to ask the tough questions. Though. You got to ask the tough questions. You're coaching. Though. You know, yeah. you have to. But my question and similar is like, well, how, what, you know, how much are you bringing and what are you expecting with him? Are you wanting him to take over all of your bills? First mm -hmm. of all, he shouldn't be taking your bills. Whatever Facts. bills you have, you should be able to maintain Facts. those without, you know. Mm -hmm. I've had plenty of people say, oh, well, my man, he get my hair. That's old. I, I, have you ever gotten my hair and nails done? No, I don't really. And I say that with confidence because... He met me, I was already maintaining myself. Right, so I right, wasn't yeah. expecting him to come in yeah. like he gonna do this, that, and the other. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens. So if she wants him to make a hundred thousand, yes, I want my hut as a chef, I, I I know what you can make. Boom, we're gonna do that. Okay. But coming in, I already knew that he was an entrepreneur. I knew that it was gonna take growth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, okay, what are we gonna do to get to this hundred thousand or whatnot? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, God, you know what I'm like saying? That, that like needs it's to be the mindset. Vision. Though. It's the like, mindset. Because like, man, like you're not gonna be um how I said, you're not gonna be always at your peak. Like right. it's not it's not gonna happen. Like it's, it's, not, it's not gonna, gonna happen. happen. I don't know what no. it caused like everybody would think like, oh, we need to be social media. Yeah, because that's where I'm it like, come from. But you go and look at everybody that got all, all the, the stuff, whatever, whatever. Right. They're freaking miserable. They're miserable. And 
check this out. Most people cannot. I just had this conversation. Most women are not going to be able to handle a man that's making 100000 plus. Man, Let me tell you why. Because you got to maintain a certain image. Facts. I've been down that road. I was with somebody back in the day who was a, um, I think he was a ball player or whatnot. His, his income, I couldn't handle that. Because first of all, he was around a whole bunch of women. He had a whole bunch of flashy cars and flashy houses. I wasn't that type of woman to make... You have to maintain a certain lifestyle with that, right? Yeah. Most women who are asking for though that amount of money or whatnot, they don't know how to handle themselves unless they were born like that, unless they come from their parents with that wealth already. Mm. Now, if you come from that wealth, then that's your standard, then that's yeah, that's sure. legit yeah. because your father, your parents, your family set that standard. Mm. Th- that's And it's nothing wrong with that, right? So that means you're not going to date somebody below that that wealth standard. Mm. But most of the average women that's coming out here talking about, I want you to make up, you know, ninety five, a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. You can't be no woman with a, a a high powered man and you wearing bonnets and slippers to the grocery Facts. store. <laughs> Any chick that come to me, I'd be like, hey, if you got... you're not gonna do that. A yeah. one, a man, a, yeah, he's a not, man. He's not gonna have it. He's gonna cheat for sure. Right. He's not gonna have that. <laughs> right. Sure. And just, a lot of these girls is, out yeah. here thinking they like, baby girl, you're not gonna walk out your house. First of all, a million dollar home, going to the store with some slippers and a head bonnet on. That's true. You're not gonna do that because first of all, he's gonna set that tone. You mm. with me, this is the way you're going to look. This is the way you got to act and whatnot. You can't hang with Shaniqua now. Uh, <laughs> and but, forgive me if anybody had an issue with Shaniqua, control- but I'm just saying. Is that controlling? Because, <laughs> like, uh, like, cause like um, I'm going to use I'm gonna use, the, I'm gonna use Adam and Eve, right? Mm-hmm. When, uh, when, uh, when, when Eve was made, right? Mm-hmm. She was formed for Adam. Right. So I have a mindset, like, whenever I get into a relationship, right, like, I always try to form the woman. I don't try to control her. Yeah. But I, there's some things that I want her to do that is for me. Yeah. So, like, nowadays, like, if a woman dress like a hoe, I'm mm-hmm. going to be honest, I'm say perfectly, <laughs> he's like, hey, look, dress a little modestly. Yeah. And they come to be like, hey, you're controlling me. Well, like, what is that? It's not controlling. I think it's that setting that standard again. And then when you got with her, you knew how she was dressing. Ooh. When you got That's with her. Man. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Facts. If she dressed like, like that, you yeah. know. And again, you got to define what is... What, I've always said to... You could be said to as a modest woman, right? Mm. And one of my aunts, um, rest in peace, Jean, she used to tell me all the time, a man wants a virtuous woman, right. right? She said, no matter what they tell you, and this is way before social media, this is back in the late 80s, on her deathbed, she said, you're my baby, you're my oldest, I want you to know, a man will always respect a woman, a virtuous woman, remain a virtuous woman. And at first I didn't understand, I'm like, auntie, I am a virgin, I'm, I'm only 16. She's like, no, fool, I said a virtuous woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, so I started started making sure my life was, I said, oh, a man definitely wants a woman who is still modest, no matter mm-hmm. what social media says or whatnot. Uh, so when you get with this woman, when you saw her dress, you was attracted to that, right? So you knew once you got with her, she kept dressing like that. Okay, but now that y'all are together, now you want her to tone it down. Why? I, I, don't, I don't think it's like tone it down. It's like to... When, like, for example, like we, because like it's always a communication. Mm-hmm. If I come to you and say, hey, I don't like that, mm-hmm. right? I understand that's what I met you, right? But mm-hmm. if you want to build something with me, because we are in the process of building, mm-hmm. not in the process to just be you how we were. But did you communicate with her in the oh, beginning? I, I, I always. Okay. Like, so if some... she did that in the beginning and she didn't, mm-hmm. she didn't see that vision, yeah. but, then why did you stick with her? No, because like she did uh, start doing it, but I mm-hmm. noticed like after a while, I noticed that that was her nature. Mm. I was like, so I, I okay. I'm saying because like even yeah. even like we, I use this at church, you know, they say come as you are, yeah, but do not remain as you are, yeah, yeah. So like to me, I was like, if uh, me in my eye, right, every woman that I date, right, is someone that's for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to make you look a certain way for the world, right. So if there's some things I don't like, like set boundaries or standards, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say those things yeah. before we even. Go right. further. If I say, hey, I don't like that, the way you dress, you just like, oh, I don't want to change it. Then me, yeah. I'm going to 
pick my shit and go and go and and that's what you're supposed to do. like you're really supposed to you said that because again you're not you're not getting into a relationship to change that person. Mm. You right. want to enhance mm-hmm. them. Right. Um, when Chef and I got together, the first thing I told him, I don't wear heels. And I don't wear, uh, what else did I say? I don't wear heels because I can't walk in heels. I have flat feet. So I love heels or other women and whatnot. They're cute, super sexy. Mm. And I tried them, but I've, my folks would tell you I will fall and wobble. <laughs> I ain't nothing cute about me <laughs> wobbling and, you know, but I love sneakers and I love sandals. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I also know I keep, keep my feet together. Keep my like I maintain, right? Gotcha. So I made this very clear in the very beginning. I don't wear heels because I know there are men who love heels, That's true. especially in Atlanta. They love a woman in some good heels. It turns mm-hmm. them on. But if, you know, but, if, but if you know a woman, or you know she don't, it's not comfortable though. Well, but like you, if you if you really know, if like you, you know, yeah. like if you know, but I'm gonna you, say the same thing. I'm like, yeah, okay. but if you got a lot <laughs> cool. of men who'll be like, oh well, I can, I'm gonna get be able to get her in some heels because people try to change folks yeah. once they get in there. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's not your job. Though. It's not your job to yeah. change that person. Exactly. Yeah. It's not like true. you said, if you have this vision, it's like, okay, well, I'm 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 a CEO of this that another, and my vision is to move us, propel us forward, right. and your style of dressing doesn't really it's not a good fit. Da da da. Mm-hmm. You know, that conversation can be had, but again, it has to be set in that beginning, and then that woman has that choice. I always say, give that person a choice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Give that person the opportunity to say yay or nay. Mm-hmm. You just be. You be authentic and be honest from day one. Like, you cannot go wrong with being honest. Mm-hmm. There's somebody out there who will appreciate you being honest from day one. So. And then once they do that, that's that respect level. Because it's like, well, he did tell me. Mm-hmm. She did tell me. So I can't go and change her. What I can do is continue to be an example. But if I go and badger this person about the dress and this, that, and the other... Then you you about to have that conflict, and then that's when the whole controlling yeah, thing comes and all of that. I, and you cast all my accent, but like, do this make me look fat? <laughs> <laughs> I be like, hey, you, do you want my answer? It was like, <laughs> I remember one ex. She was like, hey, do this make me look fat? See? I was like, I do. She's like, oh, uh, uh, ah. don't say shit. <laughs> you know, I would just, I would just like, <laughs> I would usually just be like. You got something else you can You know what I'm saying? Let's 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 see. Let's see. Let's yeah. test it out to see which one looks best. I usually, I usually talk like that. If that's the case. So, that's just me though. That's you just said me. something. I just, just said you said like women don't like. Uh, con- um, for example, you were saying like women don't like if. Uh, for example, if she, like I said, if she wearing a dress and it makes her look fat, women yeah. don't like you. Come to them and say, hey, that look, that makes you look fat. You yeah. That. Like what is that? It, it it's just the again. I don't want you to. I know I got a little pudge. I don't want you to show him. I don't want but you to if, tell me if about you it. You know, and I'm telling I, you about it. But still, <laughs> like, I need you to say, "Ooh, baby, I love them rolls. I like them rolls. I'm a pit." And then, then so, you can kind of be like, you I, know, I, I love them rolls. But when you step out this goddamn house, the <laughs> world gonna see these rolls. So if I tell you, "Hey, that thing make you a little fat," and the house, we're cool. But, I got okay, you. so you can say that, but just say it with a little cool. Sugar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I got a sugar coat. <laughs> no, no, you, no, you, you, you gotta be like, you, you gotta know be what? like, you gotta see it. Yeah, go ahead. You, 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 I don't know. That is, it is tough because it is a trick question, isn't it? Because I mean, we we like y'all's opinion because we do want to make sure that we are representing y'all, right? We want to mm. make sure we do that. But again, it's like. Maybe there's a I, I really couldn't tell you because this this is the ongoing question. You know, even even with us, sometimes he'd be like, That's what you're wearing. And then I kinda know like, okay, let me go back and, and oh, fit something. Okay. And now, okay. you know, he'd be like, That that's how you feel today. I'd be like, Yeah. Then I'll go back and I recheck something. I'm like, okay, let me, you know. But a woman just really she wants you to Say that's sexy, or you know, say it in a nice way. Mm-hmm. You know, she, you don't have to be as blunt. You know, but that's the thing, though. I'm with you. Like, yeah, but I, I, I with you. I dine you. I, I, I guide you. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I provide for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Also, like I don't know why now. There's people 
mix provision just with, with just uh with money only. Mm-hmm. Like provision has a bigger meaning than just yeah. giving money. So by me saying provide meaning I guide, right. I lecture, I teach you. Right. You know. So if I'm in that if I'm in that space with you, right? Mm-hmm. And I tell you, honey, yo, I think, yo, yo, I think make you look fat. Yeah, like, do, why, why, why do women always be like, oh, you, you, you're being against me? It's, it's. Yeah, it we gotta no eliminate sense. the word fat. But you, oh no, <laughs> is it we, we, we gotta eliminate the word you fat. You crazy as hell, bro. <laughs> you got obese. <laughs> no, not obese. You, you, just, just you let, saying. You let yourself go. Just, I was, oh, I, 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 <laughs> now she gonna swing on you. Say oh, that. Yeah, she yeah. gonna swing on you. No, say that. No, but what no. you can do is say like, you know, that it doesn't, it doesn't um fit you well, or yeah. it's not a, it's not a good fit for or there's you. Something like, you better, or, or there's something that fits you better. Or there's something that fits you better. What? What's it's something that fits you better. So yeah, saying. let's, let's that, try that, that, something. That's usually good because I'm like, if it don't, if it don't align, like, if it's something that fits you better. But I feel like a woman know though. Like, yeah, if a woman, we, if a woman that 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 dresses up, like she, she already know what she gonna. Yeah, wear. because we're not already got a she bunch already of. Know, that's like, the thing, I, I believe because like, I wasn't here, she already knew what she was gonna do. Anyway, right, I've I learned here. from women that a lot of women do not like their body. No, we don't. We deal with that body shaming, and so yeah. if our man comes and tells us that's it's fat, we look fat. Now you just sunk it even like it's already like <laughs> you can't say that you can't say it's that. like I already got on fifteen girdles I'm like I can't <laughs> breathe I can't go to the bathroom and now this Negro then told me I look fat to hell with him <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just now I'm I'm really pissed at you right but, but, like but even with dating now like they they mentioned the um you mentioned the the body shaming thing yeah. right and you know in the we're in the BBL era right yeah oh. and yeah. I, me personally, like I've always liked thick, thick women. Okay. Period. That's because me, that's just me they always meet since okay. I don't know how long, right? Yeah. And they always make it seem like, like they put it out now, like that's like the, the standard when it's never been the standard. It was. It's not the standard. It's not the standard. It, it would yeah. Ne- and it would never be a. Standard. It never be yeah. a standard. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like for example, like women will be like, oh, I'm doing it to, I'm doing it for because. You know, I'm doing it for myself. No. Yeah. You're doing it because you like to attention. Yeah. Like you saw a big old, even, even like if there's a chick that told me, she said, oh, hey, I'm a chick. I like looking at chick with big butts. Right? Yeah. It's the attention. Be honest. Don't yeah. come here and tell me, right. oh, I'm doing this because. No. Bitch, be honest. Yeah. Be saying, hey, I got this BBL because I it. like the attention. Yeah. Right? I don't like the attention of only my man. I like the attention of multiple guys. Yeah. Period. That's now, period. Now we're there understanding. Like, yeah. For example, all, all some guys out there who getting BBL for their chest. Bruh, just say, hey, I'm a lazy guy. I don't like going to the gym to That's work out. Right. Right. Be real. Yeah. Be honest. I'm going to look in the camera. People, That's out of pocket. Yeah, people want to show you. He said that's out of pocket. It's never that serious, bro. So a man can't get a, uh, the, the six pack. Man, man, hell no. <laughs> bro. Hell no. no. That's the thing, though. People, but I, my thing is, like, you you doing that for a for a for a girl that don't really care about you when yeah. you when if you have if you're like heavy set there's gonna be a girl that's crazy about you right 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 so right. it's like go for the girl that's gonna be crazy about you as not the superficial they one just because you got all. a six Fuck. pack yeah I saw the men I was like oh I didn't know the men were getting it too like the <laughs> big the, butts yeah the, the BBLs too um, and like, then hey, the six pack and then so the, out of pocket. I was like oh wow like y'all are really hey. you're right it is for attention because why is you doing it and that's the crazy part like. <laughs> I, man, I swear, yeah, a lot of women that get right, they was like, oh, I got my BBL. Now I'm a pump and dump. Of course you're a pump and dump. <laughs> That's the whole, like, like we, like, we as men, right? We we'll go yeah. to a club, we we'll see a chick wearing, like, pulling uh, tape on her titty. Yeah. And she'll be like, uh, uh, homie, everybody looking at me. No, everybody want to smash. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to bring you to my mom to show you, oh, mom, this is, no, I just yeah. want to smash. Yes, I'm attracted to do, uh, the, the, what the I see. Pre- you know yeah. the image yeah. that you yeah. protect to me, right? Yeah, that's how I view you. That's for my first expression of you. And I don't see you as a wife. I just see you as somebody mm. I'm gonna smash, and they keep it moving. It's but, just yeah. it's dangerous route to go down as far as like the yeah. surgery thing. But yeah. I understand some women after they have their pregnancies and stuff like that. Yeah. I understand the body they want to like enhance yeah, something. I, can, I get, I I get that. that. I get that angle. a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can see that but, because it does do it a lot on your. Um, oh, no, 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 no. But it, it's it's dangerous because I feel like. Oh, it's gonna be like, oh, I don't like something about my arms. Yeah. Oh, I don't like something about, my, about this. It's right. like, now you even got 10,000 surgeries and it's like your body got beat up. Like, wait, wait, and I on. can't even uh, imagine. Like, um, what's the, well, the rapper? She didn't literally had her entire body 
redone. I don't want to mention name, but she's a rapper, local rapper, and head to toe. And I'm just thinking, I'm thinking more so of the surgeries, like all of this medicine you have gone mm. under, you know. And you mm. you telling me you can't say I'm doing it for myself. You doing it for the attention from for your fans or whatever. I don't know. It it has gotten out of hand. Like it is Probably because years off your life. Yeah, mm. like I I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one chick. She was like, "Hey, I'm gonna get a BB." I said, "But you get it? I'm not. I'm not your nigga anymore. <laughs> My period." But, but, so you wouldn't date a girl who had a BBL? Uh, nah, I mm. like to me it's like to me is 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 trauma. Mm, okay. First of all, I like a woman who like herself. Yeah, I like her woman who can look herself in the mirror and be like, "I am beautiful." Yeah, naked, mm. right? So I, I don't want a woman, basically, if you dislike something about yourself and you will go to a point that to fix that, right? Yeah. That's, 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 that's a delusion that is fake. But at the end of the day, that thing is still in your mind because if you take that BBA out your butt, you're going to go back to that same woman and say, oh, I don't like that. I, I want a mm. woman who is secure in her body, secure in her mind, secure in her heart. If you're that, mm-hmm. you're perfect. Mm. Like, like, that's it. Like... Like, so no it, enhancements at all. No enhancements. I mean, like women go enhancements with the makeup and stuff like that. That's, yeah, that's a given. But if you go to a point that enhance your body, that mm-hmm. means the lack the lack of love for yourself is beyond. Yeah. Makeup. Yeah. That's pure. Yeah. Like, I can see we, that. We want to. I think deep down, men want to. Uh, we want a girl that like she walks around. Like not just like on like some cocky stuff, but she she mm-hmm. deep down she knows she's that bitch though. Okay. Like she's like I'm not trying to say, it, but I'm just saying like she knows she's confident. In, yeah. And what she is, and if she has insecurities or whatever about her body, or whatever. Yeah. If you a man, real dude, you gonna you gonna like. Uh, yeah, let me play with the rules. Yeah, 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 you, you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta caress what she's insecure about. But that's gonna make her feel. That's gonna, that's gonna make her feel good about herself. Yeah. yeah, like whatever yeah, insecurities are as a man, you're gonna touch all of them. All yeah. of them. You're gonna you gotta make sure she's good and everything like but that. But believe it or not, that wasn't mm-hmm. always the case. Mm-hmm. So that's where you get that from. Because again, we do look for attention from you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, right. at that at, at some level of our lives, we did. You know. We like we want to be a, that attractive female, you know, in mm-hmm. the club or whatnot. And and if you're not secured with yourself, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. and and so forth. And one thing I do like about this generation of women, that especially the plus size community, they've grown to love their bodies versus right. us. We were right. shamed, you mm-hmm. know. what I'm saying like being a big girl was like uh, it, it was hell for us mm-hmm. because it was either. Oh, she bitch. She know how to cook this, that, another. I'm like, nigga, I don't know yeah. how to cook. Yo, you know, that's just crazy. Kind of or it's like, oh, and and honestly, I've had guys say, oh, I know you know how to cook, yeah. or you know how to smash, be good in bed because you're a big girl. You know, mm. stuff like that. It's like terrifying. it's all that's yeah. Out of and so being <laughs> oh a big God. girl, to, and then again, you had these um, the the stuff put onto a plus size woman, these insecurities, and you're mm. just like. Okay, there's something wrong with me. Like I, I really did not mm. start wearing jeans fully. Um, didn't show my figure until probably about 15, 16 years ago mm-hmm. or so because I was so insecure about my body. Because again, it wasn't cool to be a plus size woman. Mm-hmm. You know, you were still the guy. I've had guys say, "Oh, you will never get a a, a man." Cause you too big. That's, oh yeah, you talking cap. about blunt? Shoot, I haven't had some blunt ones. You but that's, know, but that's cap though. Cause I mean, there's men right. like men like everything. Man, for and right. so you know what I'm saying. Like, every guy when, that said, "Oh, I don't, I don't deal with like yeah, everybody." You, know, you had that secret big woman that right, put it down right. on you. you like, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Stop lying. And so when I met my husband, I would tell him about these stories. He was like. What you mean? I said men didn't like big girls. Like it wasn't, a, it wasn't cute, or it wasn't, you know. So then, when you start seeing plus size women being accepted, you're like, okay, is this a fad? Is this another trend or yeah. what? And so I, I, we start admiring the women who were coming out. And said, listen, I'm plus size. Boom, boom, boom. Take me or you leave it. Now, am I saying um, plus size is always healthy? It just depends on your body because I know yes. a lot of healthy plus size women, but mm-hmm. At the same time, it's like as long as you're active and whatnot. But yeah, that was a big, um, yeah. We mm. we we were not I accepted. Got, I, I know that we so, were not accepted at I, all. I, I don't know. I will not accept this. Y'all can shit me for if you want. <laughs> like if the, if your dress uh-huh. was meant for a small chick, 
Please don't wear that shit. Now, I agree with that. Just because <laughs> like, they make it in my size. Yes, where's like, like, where the camera that like, I'm like, supposed to talk to? Like, right there, right there. Just because they make it in our size don't mean that you're supposed to wear it. Like, yeah. it, it fashion it, over. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, because, it ain't cute. It, no matter what shapes or sizes or whatever, you can still be fly no matter what. Right. That's my like, whole thing. It's like, it is, it's all about what you make it. Yeah. Cause and I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not that, I'm not that, I like a smooth dress, right? Mm -hmm. So that means I like body shapers under my dresses. Mm -hmm. So if you wearing one of them fashion over dresses and it's not in your size, no, no, uh, like, baby girl, throw it away. I, 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 give it to um, your niece. Like, I think this this gonna traumatize me for a bit. <laughs> the fact that we're talking about like body shapers, right? I met she was she was amazing, right? Yeah. And then like so when we got to the business, and she took it, and I saw all that thing drop. It was like. You gotta go what? through. You gotta go through. I bet you went through with it, though. I did. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> because, so you know, you went through with it. The same. No, it, it was like, like I, it was really like a like a five second pause. Oh, like, you kick, didn't do it in front of her, did kick, you? No, I was. It's like you know, I was like, I just I just looked at her. Yeah, I thought like, oh and, shit. Yeah, and I was like, cut this right now, or just. You know, she's so like, her shaper was it had everything yeah, tucked in. Everything tucked yeah. in because I see a lot of women buying shapers yeah. and it has everything tucked in. So to me, I was like, in my mind, it's like, damn, bro, you could have just told me. Yeah, it wouldn't been that big of a deal. But the fact that you tuck all the shit in the youth, <laughs> and I'm like, so it just who the up? fuck is this bitch? <laughs> like seriously, like and then <sighs> like and like for and that's and that's that's the reason I mean like even shapers, I think that's yeah. like a way to. Side yeah. or trick or something. Yeah. Like, be who you are. Like, for yeah, me, as a I guy, agree. right? I'm not, I, I can't be any other guy. Like, for yeah. example, like, even women are shaming the person's, uh, man's dick and so on and so on. Yeah. Like, y'all can go and change your titties, your ass, your face, and that. That guy was like, hey, bro, here it is. I <laughs> right. it. So, like, and then there's so many out there who can accept yeah. it. And I'm like, man, stop being a bitch. Just accept what God gave you. Right? <laughs> not everything. Then, there's going to yeah. be somebody that's going to embrace. You period. Yeah, it's gonna be, it it's gonna is. Be, you know? And if it's just one person, you know, man, just just stick yeah. with that person. Like, yeah. So I wanted to, you know, like we always like leave a message out to the youth and stuff like that. Right. So for the youth out there, for the young ladies and even older ladies or whatever that have insecurities, they're having troubles dating, they're trying to figure out themselves, moving around mm -hmm. in this little jungle I was talking about. Right. right. What would you say to them? I would say what y'all been saying: be you, like be authentically you. Um, from the jump, um, you know, and when you're dating, be honest. Now, am I saying going on the first date and you telling the person spilling all the beans, you know, mm -hmm. but when you're dating, just remember that you're collecting, collecting data, mm -hmm. um, date, enjoy dating. Dating does not equate to having sex with everybody, you know, mm -hmm. you're dating and make that known. Hey, I'm dating. So that means mm -hmm. I have a date on Saturday, Sunday, or whatever. Oh. But just be honest. So dating is not to take it down, just like just not the person. You say what? So dating is not to smash on the first night. No. To, now, okay. now I'm, let me make this very clear. As a relationship coach, I always say once, once you add sets into the equation, you got an issue, right? Mm. So this is why I suggest strongly take sets out of the equation. Now, you two grown people. You're mm -hmm. grown people. So if you make that clear that I want to uh, smash, smash. <laughs> then make that clear okay. and no strings attached. But right, you got to right. make it so crystal clear that she ain't calling your number afterwards. You ain't calling her afterwards. You make it clear. Uh, okay, 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 okay. You just a one night stand. Communication. Right. Communication. Right. Right. You got to make it so crystal clear. That mm. is the issue. We smash each other. Then we get feelings. Somebody gets feelings somewhere. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Because you didn't make it clear. Hey, Not you true. just I, I just need a cut, buddy, for one night. I was going through something. I just needed you to come to the house and gotcha. boom, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. You gotta make that clear. Mm -hmm. So people uh I'm but, sorry. No, it, it, that you, that's the part. nobody wanted to make people, make that clear. Because like, I have some women that's like uh, I want to test the water before yeah. I get committed. It's like, for example, there's like, let's say I get into a relationship and the sex sucks. Mm -hmm. What do I do? And I'm like, but the relationship is not basic sex. Right. I can have toys, but some men will be stubborn. It's like, I don't want a toy. I want this. Right. I'm like, shit. I don't know. What that's to tell a, you. you know, that's a cop out excuse because, again, things going to happen in your relationship where you're not going to be able to have sex all the time. You see what I'm saying? Life is going to happen. And what you going to do then? 
Right. You're going to step out because you didn't like, because things are going to happen. So that whole test in the water before, no, you base your, and your, your partners, you're supposed to teach each other what you like. You know what I'm saying? You teach each other. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, just, just be, we've lost the art of being honest, communication. Um, turn off social media, get off of, so, listen, start recording your dates. Start recording your, if you want to, you know, share with your friends and your outings, if you want to be like, hey, we, you know, trying this new mountain or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'll be doggone. Like, mm-hmm. make, bring back the intimacy of dating. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, unless you're on a dating show and you're doing it for a contract or whatever, but bring back the intimacy of dating and, and enjoying each other. You know, turn off the phones and, and just enjoy that person and just make it crystal clear. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, it's been a great date. Um, hope we can connect. If not, you know, hey, be go. You know, we good. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be rude to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, I think um, we've lost. We just lost the humanity mm-hmm. um, because we were trying to prove to our girlfriends, oh, he wasn't no good. This, no, he was. A, he's a good dude. He just wasn't your fit. He wasn't, it wasn't for good you. For yeah, you, he wasn't you know, for you. or vice versa. So just be authentic. Just um, bring back. That, that communication and just talk it out just because everything can be resolved. And, mm. and if you're not ready for dating, if you have not healed, do not, do not, do not, do not date. Gotcha. Mm. Continue to work on yourself. You'll know when you're ready to get out there because you don't want to, you don't want to put your trauma on anybody else. Right. Gotcha. You know, for yeah. communication. So speaking of communication, where can they find you for your services and where can they find you to follow you and keep keep in touch with you? Because cause she has her own podcast, too, if you guys didn't know, that she's working yeah. on and stuff like that, too. So where can they find you? So it's all things. Um, Trinette, I am Trinette L. Collier.com. That's the website. You can follow me on all social media platforms. I am Trinette L. Collier. And the mail room. That's the, the mail, room. M-A-L-E, room 7671. Hey, so you, that's you where you can follow me. You don't have a female room? No, it's, but <laughs> but you be proud of it. This is for y'all, the mail room. That's it's tough. a platform for y'all, for black cool. men to talk about, you know, stuff. Cool. We got to go on there. Yeah, I'm y'all would, to go y'all on would on have there. to come on. I'm gonna have for to sure. bring gotta, y'all in. We gotta do I got to get all fancy and get this set up. You know, okay. you know, y'all have to bear with me. <laughs> you know, no, no, we, we definitely but, going on in there for yeah, sure. For sure. But I would definitely love to have because it is a you know one of the. Um, inspirations was my husband because of the lack of communication between men and women, black men and black women. Mm-hmm. Um, because I just found that we're just, we're in the era of being combative and just hating on each other. And it's not so, you know, so that was the purpose. It's a safe space for black men to come and talk about okay. their feelings and life and love and all the good stuff. You know, feelings. that's fire. Yes. Yeah, like, feelings. But like, I, I, I like, I like the communication you guys had. Like he just, I think he did some kind of speak Yeah, he, yeah, he my cue, yeah. And, he be so loud with it, though, that whole clip. Yeah, and, and like... <laughs> but I can tell y'all, like, real really homies, cool. though. Y'all, y'all are yeah. real homies. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Because he'll tell me I cut people off in a hard time. I don't, I don't mean to cut folks off, y'all. I just be so passionate. No, so. it's all good. We, we yeah. love having you here. Yeah. Um, you want anything you want to leave off with? Um, to me? Yeah, you want to leave right. off with something? Don't be toxic out there, man. Just, if you know, if like you said, if you're not a point of... Healing, or if you're in a point that you're thinking about, oh, what did all the guys did to you? What did all the women done to you? Then don't put yourself out there because one thing about feelings and emotion, it always gonna surface, regardless of how hard you wanna try, you wanna hide it. So, be also be just, just be a good person because if you don't want nobody fucking with your ass, don't fuck with somebody else. <laughs> Period. You know, like they said, that's gotta say, fuck around and find out. Mm-hmm. And you come up, if you see me in the street, yo, don't try me. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I just hope that people really see each other as human, that we all go through something. Right. You know, also the 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 strong black woman thing. Yes, you know, we all need strong black women on life, but you don't have to be a fucking beast gonna ruin everybody's life because you believe that you're strong. And then to me, like if you come to the point where you say that you're a strong black woman. To me, you're a weak woman because it's not said, it is shown. It is shown, exactly. That's all. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate you guys tuning in to Paper Play Boys. We're now on Twitter too. Paper Play Boys with a Z at the end. 
check us out. Follow us on Instagram too. We are Play, Paper Play Boys. And we really appreciate you coming through because oh, you dropped a lot okay. of gems for us for the youth. Thank and everything you. Like that. I appreciate you. being here. I thank Bikes. y'all for reaching out. I enjoyed it. Uh-huh. Thank we you, appreciate thank you. Thank and you. stay tuned for the next one, y'all. So you don't want to say nothing before? No? Be good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Right. Follow us on all sorts of platforms. Really cool, Paper Play Boys. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is what made a... That was good. I'm going to do the introduction. I'll let you do it. I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me adjust my mic. So, so guys, we're back again. Let's play, boys. <laughs> <laughs>